Good evening, everyone. Hope you're all doing well, and welcome to Banjo-Kazooie, which we're going to be finishing off tonight after four whole parts. <laughs> Here, I thought it might take only two. Uh, we had to replay more than half the game because of fun glitch time. But I think tonight, I know I'm jinxing it by putting finale in the title. However, fingers crossed, <laughs> nothing goes horribly wrong, and we can do it. Welcome, Daniel. Welcome, Blockfrog. Christian, good to see ya. Shiny Moltres, True Seed. Always a pleasure to have all of you joining for the streams, and hope we have another good one tonight. Let me know if everything is sounding good, looking good. As we're just getting ready to go here. Just pray the notes don't mess up again, Daniel. So yeah, we're not going to be playing the file that had the problem. So last time... So here's the, here's the bad file right here. Forever stuck at 696 notes, although last time we started the good old Game Boy file. And in 3 hours and about 15 minutes we got 700 notes. So that's less time, significantly less time than it took us the first time. But, you know, I'm not speedrunning. We're kind of just having some fun here, just for fun. What achievements do we still have to get? Um, so all the empty honey homes, we're definitely going to be doing that. So that sounds like just winning the furnace fun. Uh, it sounds like beating the game and getting all the notes, so we should be able to unlock all that tonight. And in terms of where that lands us on the leaderboard, like, where do I need to be to be in, like, the top 100 people who have beat this game? I'm curious. How do I even, like, cycle through this? Well, as of right now, 700- okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm 440,000th in the world. Sounds about right. Okay, but look at these. So, so... How do I scroll down? Oh, just like to the next page, I guess? No, I want... Like, I just want to see... Okay, like, if I go to the next page... This is... Oh, this is like, that's just for Mumbles Mountain. I don't know, it's weird. It's being weird. <laughs> I just want to see... All right. Oh, I think I finally figured it out there. Whatever, we'll figure it out someday. Maybe after we've beat it, we'll see where we end up on the leaderboards. But welcome, everyone. Yeah, there's achievements, Shiny Moltres. We're experiencing everything new about the Xbox 360 slash, you know, all the other, it's uh, on the other Xbox consoles as well, including the glitches. So, um, aren't you happy I pointed that out in case you decide to play it in the future? Um, but yeah, everyone, hope you're doing well. But wow, True Seed, <laughs> you wish you were in Hawaii. Man, wasn't last time fun last night with Super Mario Brothers CD? We played two levels for a whopping three hours. That should tell you how good it is. Uh, you know, I've been thinking about that game even after we streamed it. And that's a good sign, you know, when a game's still on your mind, when you want to experience more of it. Are we going to take our time now? Yeah, we're definitely not going to be rushing too much here. Just going to be having fun with it. Um, of course, you know, in the replay, I was kind of sloppy in some places with how fast we were going. But it was kind of fun playing fast, too. Something I'm not so used to doing. And I believe last time... Didn't we... I'm sure that last time I upgraded my notes and stuff. Or my, my eggs and stuff. So I should have 20 of each. Like 20... I should have 20 gold feathers... And I know this because I don't think I showed it on stream, but I did do like the save and quit thing after. So I'm not sure why it wouldn't have saved that. So yeah, unfortunately, where, where can I get a gold feather really quick to see if it does go up to 20? I know there's one in here. Otherwise, we might have to go back to the sand castle and enter those cheats again. No, this is, is this where the mumbo token is or is this where the gold feather is? If I can ever get up there. This is all wasting time. My world record ruin. Where is the gold feather in this room? I know there's one. Yeah, there. My bad. And this is the moment of truth. Will it go up to 20? Or do we have to go enter cheats again? Oh, no! It didn't save my Cheeto cheats! And I, and I, I swear, I did do, like, the save and quit thing. I saw the grunty becoming thin thing. So, <laughs> good job, game, for not saving that. I, I don't think I left the level after I entered them. Maybe that was my problem. Well, this is a great camera. So it looks like it's back to Treasure Trove Co. for us. Christian, uh, Christian, I did not what? Um, if you're talking about save and quit, I did it uh, after I ended the stream. I definitely did it. So it must have just been a case of it didn't save because I didn't leave the level or something. So 
yeah, now you know. <laughs> um, because, yeah, I figured like you would still save it even if you didn't leave the level. That's the benefit of doing save and quit, is because you know it would save even if you didn't do something that would normally cause the game to auto save, like leave a level. But apparently not. So we're entering Cheeto cheats to start things off here. Hopefully, it still considers the cheats unlocked. Oh my gosh! Imagine if I found another way to freaking soft lock us out of stuff, but we already got the achievement for finding Cheeto three times, so that's all that really matters. If I had to go into the end game with only like, you know, ten gold feathers, it would kind of suck, but we could do it. I didn't do the Cheeto codes? Did I decide not to? I, I was sure I did, but okay. Yeah, I'm sure I did this. I'm sure if you go check the end of the video, because the, the trick is, some people may have been tricked if you watch that video, to think it ended earlier than it did because I kept realizing there was things I forgot to do. So that video goes on for like another half an hour after I initially say we're gonna wrap things up. Well, I'm sure I, 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 I'm sure I did this, but okay. I will concede for now, considering it doesn't seem like there's uh, much point in arguing it. We gotta do it again anyway. You all get to see it in case you didn't watch the last part, which again was just kind of a recap of things that we had already done because the game decided to be super extra fun. Feathers and... Gold feathers! Wait, oh, yeah, I even remember we had the problem the first time! Where after I entered the first two cheats, it wouldn't let me enter the third one until I went out and came back in. I'm having deja vu here, but yeah, so after this we're heading over to Rusty Bucket Bay. And after we wrap that up, it will be click clock wood, and then just you know everything in order from there. And I think it's hopefully going to be a going to be a good night. Of course, these last couple of levels are the longest ones. So even though in the beginning of the game, you know, a level might take you 10 minutes, 20 minutes, I think we took to beat Spiral Mountain. We might spend like almost an hour alone on just click clock wood. You're essentially playing the same level four times. Okay, and that's everything. Never to be seen again. Why are we cheating though, Wise Bunny? You know all about that. You're you're just you're just egging me on there. Haha, <laughs> get it? Blue eggs. Um, okay, so the reason but the, the reason you would enter those is because they're not real cheats. It's because they're, they're they're essentially upgrades. You know, Cheeto tells you those codes and you go and enter them, and it increases your capacity to hold items. That's they're not really cheats. It's more just that's the, the game's funny, hilarious way of providing you with upgrades. It'd be like if every time in Metroid you picked up a, a capsule and it was like, haha, go enter this code in the sandcastle floor. And where am I going here? I guess I could go back and do the cauldron, but we're halfway there anyway. Might as well just run it out th at this point. But yeah, hope you're all doing well, having a great night, ready for some Banjo-Kazooie. Let me know if the volume levels are all good. Hopefully you can hear me just fine. And then, now that guy is just standing in the most inconvenient spot, isn't he? Just for that. I, like, I would normally leave you alone, but... Eye for an eye, as they say. Yeah, I didn't get the mumbo token. Um, we had a lot of mumbo token issues last time. I also feel like I might have missed a couple other ones. I could swear we had like 20-something at the end of the first file that we've now abandoned. But you know what? Mumbo tokens aren't counted for completion and there's not an achievement for them. So as far as I'm concerned, they don't exist. With that said though, we will need 25 of them in the final level for the final transformation. But that will not be any problem. We'll get some more here in... Uh, Rusty Bucket Bay, as well as a few in Click Clock Wood. Now, is the level still open? Or did this forget to save as well? No, it looks like we're still good to go here. And these guys just oddly, like, you can only ever experience the... Holy crap. Okay, that really scared me. Because I was about to go on a tangent about how I don't think they come out of the hole when they're underwater. Is that a thing in the original N64 game? I can swear that they just didn't work anymore <laughs> once the water level rose, but okay, 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 okay. That was scary. And we'll just kind of forget that that happened. But alright, what's the order we're doing things in good old Rusty Bucket Bay here? My favorite level, because it's it's absolutely bonkers. But we come over here, you get four notes on top of this thing. And then already the fun time starts is we have to jump into the oily water and get a Jinjo. Now I can defeat this guy with like some eggs. And we got 200 of them, might as well waste a whole bunch. 
Doesn't even drop a honeycomb. But yeah, so the oily water drains your air twice as quick, plus when you are just like on the surface, it still continues to drain your air. So you have to do some really scary underwater maneuvers in this level while the air is also draining twice as fast as it normally would. Fun times all around, but see, that, that wasn't so bad. But see, you kind of want to do a jumping thing here, because as long as you're touching that water, your air still goes down. And there we go. Do you ban Daniel now, Christian? Did something happen? <laughs> um, oh, also, you didn't get the mumbo. Uh, yes, Christian, yes, go ahead. No, uh, Big Phil, welcome. Hope you're having a nice night. I uh, couldn't imagine getting halfway through a game only to learn you can't progress anymore. So the problem wasn't so much we couldn't progress. We probably could have done most things. I'm afraid that we still, uh, you know, it probably would have made some notes in this level and Click Clock Wood inaccessible as well. And just to avoid any issues that might have come from that. Plus the fact we couldn't get the note achievement because we wouldn't have had all 900 of them. I figured uh, we would just replay the game. I like Banjo-Kazooie enough it wasn't really an issue. For some reason, I think this is the only one where this happens. If you put extra eggs into that toll, the bridge comes out and you can get these guys. I don't think I need the gold feathers, so we'll save them in case we do later. Also, gotta watch for the windows here because some of them are enterable. Like this one. You were explaining one the first playthrough. He got the other token. Yeah, so what happened was, Daniel, exactly, um, the, the first playthrough we got one token, and then the second playthrough we got the other one, sorry, sorry, uh, you know, in one file we got one, and then the second file we got the other one, so it's technically kind of like we got both. Is there a Jiggy in here? Oh, there is, too. So, when you go inside some of these side rooms, the camera angles are, like, really bad. There it is. Yeah, if you want to talk about real cheats, uh, you know, if this is your first time playing the game, you want a little bit of extra help, there is a cheat for infinite air you could enter, and that would also work when... Where am I? While in this oily water, so... Makes this level much, much easier if you do something like that. And what else is in here? Four notes we need to collect? So yeah, the notes are getting a lot more spread out now. Again, Mumbo's Mountain, they're like all just on a on a hillside, you can collect them all in like five seconds. But no, in, uh, in these later levels, it's really easy to kind of forget where a couple notes are. And have an issue like we had in Mad Monster Mansion, except like for real. So there's a few things we gotta do here. So good old Chomper here is gonna come back. Uh, like, can we swim faster than him? That's actually pretty funny. It's very hard to outrun him. Much like Mr. Vile, did, if, uh, if you watched the third part, which was again like a replay of things that we did in part one and two, you would have seen how much trouble we had with Mr. Freaking Vile. It was very, very strange. So this was one of the last things I ever found in the game again. There's this hole in the wall here that you can barely see. There's light coming from it, somehow. Like I'm not sure why there's so much light inside this uh, boathouse that it's going, shining through the wall. But yeah, in here, is the uh, one of the empty honeycombs and there's no other way into this building but to swim into that wall from the side in the oily water and we see a switch like this one in uh, Gobi's Valley that makes the honeycomb piece appear very rare seeing that switch oh I was trying to do a thing before he got 100 red feathers. It's nice seeing those numbers once they're once they're so high up there. Oh, just missed it. Where am I? <laughs> and uh, this is an interesting thing. This is the only flying pad in the entirety of Rusty Bucket Bay. So enjoy it while it lasts. Otherwise, I think the only level that doesn't have a flying pad is Mumbo's Mountain. Because you don't learn flying until Treasure Trove Cove, but... Yeah, not, not much flying in this level except for like that one little bit at the end. Where am I here? Aha! You can't go through the gate. Okay, so now... Time to get back up onto... The platform somewhere. There is another thing we can do underwater there. Perhaps once I get my air back, we'll go down and do that too. 
But yeah, I hope you're all having a great night. Loot, the great Andrew's back. Thank you. Hope everyone's having a nice stream. I guess I should pause. I wonder if the, you know, the, the time for the leaderboards keeps running even when you're paused. I don't think it should. Uh, wasn't there another buggy mumbo token in another level? Yes, in Click Clock Wood, there is uh, a weird one too. Um, let's see here. Is Mr. Vile the ghost? No, Mr. Vile was that red alligator guy. But you have to have to eat all those red things and we had this uh, an awful time with that oh no <laughs> he had like a toe on the on the edge still so of course he would fall off uh i guess what we could do while we're down here anyway is go in this hole here i'm breaking the whole immersion here usually you'd like talk to the guy down there before you go in here and do this but we'll go up here and skip the whole conversation anyway go into this little weird room and this is one of those ones where it's like, you know, if you die and have to come back in here and do all this, I could just leave some of that health in case we need to come back and get it later. But yeah, don't forget the four notes in here. But since this is the Xbox 360 version, even if we have an unfortunate death at some point, fingers crossed we don't, uh, but the engine room is coming, probably what many people consider the most difficult part of Banjo-Kazooie. And you know, accidents happen in there. Yeah, just scrape that anchor, like, right through him. <laughs> I'm in two halves now, but, you know, you saved me, I guess. And there's a Jiggy. But, yeah, this level really tests your swimming skills. Like, you thought that Clanker's Cavern was bad. Uh, and some of the swimming you have to do in there. This level, you know, not only is there swimming shenanigans, but your air dro uh, drops twice as fast. So, good luck. It's, like, so dark, I can't even see where I am. Let's, let's get our air back. And, again... It's weird because just going to the surface isn't enough. You actually have to get out of the water. <laughs> See, it's still draining before your air comes back. There we go. Back down to three lives again. I know I keep mentioning, you know, would it really have been that hard for a game to, to save your one-ups? And they just uh, ditch one-ups all together in the sequel. There's the Jiggy. Okay. Well, where's the ladder? I guess we'll go to this one. Like, see just how fast your air can drop? Like, you need to be perfect in your swimming ability. Alright, so now without any mistakes, let's actually get these... N Where am I? Oh, I went into the hole in the roof. Just as I'm talking about not making mistakes. I forgot all about that hole. It's weird you can't find information on the other mumbo token in Click Clock Wood. Oh, yeah, I forget where I read about that. I think I was just looking up about um, glitches in Banjo-Kazooie or such. Does anyone know if there's any Xbox 360 related glitches in the second game I should be aware of? Because that would be a much longer one to have to replay. Uh, <laughs> Banjo-Tooie is just huge. I don't know what it was with Rare. It's like you know, the, they always made their sequels like way bigger than the original. And sometimes when you look at you know, Banjo-Tooie, it's like, was it too big? Was it just right? debatable. I like the size of the first game, I think, but, you know, Banjo-Tooie is obviously great, too. But, alright, okay, we got all that stuff now. This looks really bad. Thankfully, it's not insta-death. Or else it'd be a little bit scarier. There's a Mumbo token, our favorite. So, the Jinjos are hidden, you might notice, on the corners of the stage. It's like the yellow one was where that uh, where the shark guy was, the green one's in this corner. I think we went under and got the purple one in the other corner. So it's kind of funny that none of the Jinjos are actually on the Rusty Bucket ship. They're all in these corner kind of areas. Going up here, it's easy to kind of forget about these three guys. And I think this is like a time challenge. Level 16 seconds for that. Did I waste too much time already? We shall see. Oh, <laughs> just in time. <laughs> it's only oily water, right? So here we go. Our first uh, steps on the actual rusty bucket ship, not through the main entranceway. I didn't mean to. I didn't know if I was going to do this first or not. There's still some stuff to do in the surrounding areas out there. But we're in the kitchen right now. Again, another one of those rooms with like kind of a weird camera angle. 
This guy, I think we can do this to not get hurt. Most people probably just jump into the oven and take the hit because why not? <laughs> there you go. Slid right onto that stove. And we get to hear a hilarious grunty speech as a result. But like, see, there's this weird... Like, see? Like, you couldn't even see those. So don't forget to have like a good look around before you leave. These weird side rooms. And of course, there's a whole ton of eggs in the fridge. I think that's it though. I don't think there's anything else that like we really need in here. We get like little chompy guy. Okay. Hopefully I didn't miss anything in here. This is the room that you come to if you're missing like one note. It's probably in one of those corners. But okie dokie, so I'm not quite ready to do the ship yet. Let's climb back up this rope and finish doing the perimeter before we come back to the actual rusty bucket. I should probably do the inside sooner than later, but again, even if we die, I don't have to collect everything again. So, you know, as much as like that feature is like, ugh, you know, it does relieve some of the stress, potential stress here. And another toll paid. Why the toll accepts eggs, I don't know. But uh, we won't ask, we won't question that. So of course, you know, the four Jinjos around the corners as mentioned, but there's a fifth one in one of these boxes. This room's really strange, I think there's... Okay, not this room actually, it's another room I'm thinking of. This one has some notes in it, so let's do that. Is there anything hidden in the corner here that I can't see? No, there's not. Like, I never be afraid to look around. Did I miss a note up there? It looked like almost, or maybe I was just seeing some health in the corner. Yeah, that might have been it. All right, I think we're done in here. Very good. Hello, Super Tom. Welcome. Hope you're having a great night. Thanks for stopping by the stream. As we finish up Banjo-Kazooie tonight, fingers crossed, nothing goes crazy. So this room is fairly empty, with, it seems, with the exception of three, four notes here. But what you can do in this room, that isn't initially obvious. Oh. And man, shooting eggs is so much easier in the second game, where all you have to do is like look around and the, and the crosshair shows up. If you defeat all of these guys... One more? Wasting all of our eggs. A one-up pops out of this box, which is just like such a weird thing. I don't think there's any other place in the game where defeating all of the enemies spawns an extra life. And again, extra life's not really that important in Banjo-Kazooie, but hey, if you're collecting them all, don't miss that one. Again, they all disappear when you turn the game off anyway. And the last container we get into by doing this, and this is where the fifth Jinjo is. This is the fifth corner of the level, I guess. There we go. That just leaves the orange one. And is there anything else to find in this room? Yeah, this is uh, definitely one of those ones I'm talking about with the, the weird camera angles. Wow, that's like the first thing I think I've ever defeated with a punch. Nothing here, seemingly. There's probably a mumbo token or something in here somewhere, but again, the game gives you so many extra mumbo tokens. Oh, there it is, there it is. Uh, if you collect like every single one, you'll have nearly 40 extras by the end. It's so strange that they never added them to the list of collectibles on the total screen. I mean, that contributes a lot as well to the fact that, um, you know, there's, there's glitched ones that can not spawn, because if they were never even keeping track of how many mumbo tokens there were themselves, you know, how would they expect anyone else to? Something like up here, and... Oh, I, the perspective's odd. Like, where am I? There we go. Alright. And I think that's everything. 
in this box. You feel bad for those innocent goblin chefs. Really? I mean, they didn't do they didn't do anything wrong. It's like a Zelda puzzle, says Christian, getting uh, getting that item there. Let me see. If you bought a used Wii U for thirty dollars at your local thrift store, nice. Yeah, I've noticed that Wii U stuff starting to show up at the thrift stores, and Wii U stuff I think is going to be very desirable in the future, so if you have a chance to, to grab it now, it's certainly a good time. Or yeah, I think the price is uh, definitely going to take a spike in the coming bit. Would they only sell like 12 million Wii U's? So I think the day will definitely come when they're not so easy to find. But alright, with that said, I think we're finally ready to take the Rusty Bucket seriously now. So let's get on there and do some stuff. Yeah, you can pair different Wii U gamepads and such to, to different consoles, so... Uh, that's awesome though! Very awesome, Super Tom. Getting that Wii U. So here we got a little bit of a code to enter. And the code never changes, so if you know it, you know it. We will go see where you're actually supposed to learn it, though, before we do that. Should just be on, like, the wall somewhere. And there's a whole bunch of windows you gotta go into as well. Including this one right here, and I think this... Is this the room that you see in the bottles picture? So, like, he might have collected some of those notes, which would have caused a problem. We will be seeing this room again someday, though. For reasons we won't discuss at the exact moment. So there you go, making our way through Rusty Bucket Bay. Your Wii U's in pristine condition, says Big Phil. So that was around the time when every single console was being released with like a glossy finish. And that just scratches by looking at it. So my Wii U has not escaped having some noticeable marks on like the top. <laughs> just from you know, setting the Wii U gamepad on top of it or you know, trying to get or getting the dust off. Like dust is enough to freaking scratch it. I'm so happy that uh, companies have moved away from that glossy finish. And that bothered me about the, the Wii U gamepad and like the Pro Controller as well. They also had that glossy finish where now you know, we're, we've kind of gone back to more of a matte finish, which I like. I think it feels much better, but that's, <laughs> that's that's my spiel about the weird glossy age. Xbox 360 controller I'm playing with right now, though, is actually very comfortable. I, I definitely understand why so many people liked the Xbox 360 controller back in the day, and it does not have that same uh, glossy problem, thankfully. I do need to be checking these boats. How did I think about it? Oh, wonderful. Yeah, exactly. And this gives us a chance to get on the boat the normal way. So maybe we'll take an opportunity to do that. But yeah, I gotta check those boats around the side. I think there's like a couple of mumbo tokens in them. Okay, here where we're at. Let's see, this is another one of those rooms with the weird camera angle going on. So yeah, Mario, uh, Super Mario Brothers CD last night was so fun. And to have people who worked on the hack even show up in the comments uh, really meant a lot. I've really been enjoying the Mario ROM hacks, and I uh, really appreciated everyone else who's been joining for them. Isn't it just neat seeing what the fans can create? Now, I've always hated this one spot. Is, again, the perspective makes it a little weird. Landed on there properly? And then, uh, those guys are strange enemies because they take off two health instead of just one. Why they decided to make them so harsh, I don't know. Alright, but that's that. Is there anything else in this room to collect? I thought there was like a mumbo token in this one too. Like behind one of these posts or something? Oh, <laughs> maybe it's just a gold feather. We'll take a look around just to be sure. This is a weird one. Yeah, lots of gold feathers in here, if you need them. See, you misspelled old, thought autocorrect to fix it, said Super Tom. Um, let's see. Oh, your old brick Wii U console. Oh, interesting. I like the original Xbox controller too, says True Seed. You never publish books with gloss for that reason. 
that you don't like the light glaring off it when you try to take pictures. Yeah, totally, right? Yeah, I'm happy that we've kind of moved on from gloss and everything's kind of matte. Now if only we could go back to when, uh, you know, icons and stuff were cool. Let's get rounded edges and transparency back in style. Instead of just like clunky squares. Everything just being clunky, ugly squares of a solid color with zero shading. Okay, looks like we've done all this now. Let's keep on going. And where's another window that we can enter? Don't think we need any more health right now. There's everyone's favorite door. We're not going to go in there quite yet, just a little longer. So here's the code, 312111. Very simple to remember, so I'll probably forget it. Because we're going to go in another window on the way back. I think the main thing you're in here for is these four notes. I don't think there's anything really important on any of the beds, but we'll we'll check those out as well, just in case. Got like feathers, more feathers. <laughs> there's Conker. I don't think that there was a Conker game out yet. Or was the Game Boy Color one out? Conker's Pocket Tales. Back when he was like the super happy friendly squirrel that never ever swore ever again. Well, there is a mumbo token in here. Again, like, how are you ever going to see that, though? Like, even from this angle, you can't see it. Mumbo tokens are hidden in all sorts of really evil places. By the way, Andrew, you messaged Rare about fixing the Banjo-Kazooie uh, note glitch, and they said they would work on it, Raynock, like, in the... Oh! 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 Whoa, what a hit! That was evil. Where does this even take us? Oh, this was, like, the wrong side that we want to be on here. But it's okay, we'll figure it out. But uh, really, they actually got back to you? That's uh, that's hilarious. I wonder if it was a canned response like that one I got from uh, from Nintendo that time. But still, very, very nice. And thank you for doing that. Again, uh, apparently a patch has been released for the note glitch, but it's uh, supposedly you know, maybe only on like the Xbox One and the, the Game Pass versions of the game. And Rare, uh, you know, Rare Replay, of course. You know, I paid $15 each for these Banjo games. When people tell me that you can get Rare Replay for, like, a couple bucks. <laughs> so, so, whoops. Alright, what was it? Three. I think you take damage if you hit the wrong one. It was probably automated, but still, no, right? No, that's great. A while ago, you bought the NES version of Monopoly. Has great soundtrack and sound effects. And yeah, we played uh, NES Monopoly on stream. Uh, we won a round of that. And it was actually a really impressive game. Like, it worked really well. It was a little bit slow, as, uh, you know, some some games on the NES can tend to be. Just uh, just back in the day, it was, it was hard to make a fast-paced board game in console form. But, you know, soundtrack-wise, and it, it, you know, it worked properly. It worked very well. And we had uh, quite a bit of fun with that. Oof, no, no, I heard him. I heard the sound, and I was like, I have made a big mistake. Yeah, that, 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 that's probably the most common enemy in the game, right? They just place them everywhere. How do I get back up there again? That's a good question. Where was the ladder? There it is. But I always tend to enjoy the more industrial levels in video games because I think it's it's a theme you don't see enough. You see a lot of the grasslands, a lot of the desert, a lot of the forests, a lot of the ocean. But I like the more, you know, modern-esque... I thought I killed him last time. No, that makes a lot of sense because I got hit. I'm just demonstrating what happens to, if you lose all of your health in Rusty Buck Bay. I don't think that's ever been documented before. <laughs> Let me steal the life from this guy. Again, two damage per hit. I wonder why they decided on that. Again, especially considering they're the most common enemy. They just knew it'd be draining your health. And again, we've already got one of the empty honeycombs in this stage. For some reason, collecting the remaining uh, the remaining empty ones will not give us another piece of health. And the third time's the charm. Which always seemed really odd to me. All of that for a mumbo token. Again, our favorite collectible. Uh, 
moving around the side here. You hate the industrial level in Banjo Tooie? What? No, that's a great level. It's like the it's like the you know strange cousin a cousin of this level. I love it. The green things and holes are annoying, especially the parrots and oh my gosh, yes, yes, those suck. Um, as we've seen it in the mansion level, says Daniel. Uh, you think deserts tend to be your least favorite? Deserts, I find, I really like or I really don't like. I find it's like it's hard to find a kind of in between desert. Like Mario Odyssey, I thought the desert was great. But then in you know, some other Mario games, it's like, ah, eh, the desert levels, it's okay. So let's go up here. We got a couple things we're going to achieve by climbing this rope. One of them being we can now fly to this platform and make this appear. So in the beginning, the witch switch jiggies are hidden in like some pretty creative ways. Like the first one, you have to use the termite to climb up the, the hill or like the mountain on the outside of Mumbo's mountain. Like that's kind of neat to have to do something like that. Or there's like the one that's inside the giant uh, Grunty statue, or the one that opens up in the coffin in Gobi's Valley. And then you just get one like that, where it just kind of appears in the middle of nowhere. And it's like, you wonder why that one was like so not thought out <laughs> when, uh, you know, when they put so much effort into some of the other Witch Switch Jiggies. Very nice. So we got notes here. And we could not reach this area from the other side because the toll is on this side instead. Let me see Block Fog, Deserts. Uh, Sonic 3 and Knuckles don't like the desert in that game. Was it Sandopolis? I think that's a, it's a fine world. Um, but yeah, I can see how it might not be someone's favorite. All right, the last toll has been paid everyone. And this one's another kind of awkward one. Where we do this, and then they put a whole bunch of these guys just for fun. Just to make sure you don't get hit in any silly ways. And there's the final Jinjo. And I did a really funny thing in the replay in Gobi's Valley where I collected all of the Jinjos and I actually didn't pick up the Jiggy after because I forgot about it. It was kind of inside a, a, a jar. So I just didn't see it spawn. And in that stream, I invited others to, to chat with me. So I wasn't listening to any sound effects or anything. And yeah, we just kind of missed that one, which is kind of funny. It was a massive time waste in our Banjo-Kazooie speedrun here. Okay, we're done everything around the perimeter of the boat. It's time to finish up what's on the, on the center there. And overall, Rusty Bucket Bay, like, not the longest level. Like, how long have we been playing? Length in this level definitely comes from, like, falling into the water by accident and doing silly things. Like, I've done a bit of, but it could be worse. Next thing we're going to do is this. <laughs> I think I could hear him hit the ground. All right, it's boss time, everyone. And if we're just really feeling like being silly, you can really break this boss by just using our 20 gold feathers. And there you go. You like Donkey Kong deserts. Donkey Kong doesn't have many deserts. Uh, like Angry Aztec in Donkey Kong 64 I quite like. But like Donkey Kong Country 1? No. 2? No. Like there's not really uh, Donkey Kong... Many Donkey Kong themed desert levels. Which is interesting. No, when they do exist, yeah, they tend to be fun. Instead of speed runs, we need slow runs. I mean, that's kind of, you know, what I do typically. Kind of just relax and play things at our own pace. I think that's pretty nice as well. Aha, see, I remember that guy. Okay, what else we got going on here? We got more mumbo tokens in these lifeboats. Getting back out of the lifeboats is always kind of scary. Got some notes here. And is there another mumbo token on this side? No. Okay, so. Next thing we're doing is going inside this pipe. No mumbo transformation in this level. Again, despite all the mumbo tokens that they handed. I was in attack mode when I touched you. What do you think a good transformation would be for a level like this? Probably something that could swim. Okay, so. 
Here we go. The final challenge of this level and one of the most annoying parts of the game. I like how you can see everything in this room because of the draw distance. You can literally see, like, the start up there. That's funny, because I think that would normally be too far for it to load in, but yes. Again, how many notes are we missing? Twelve? That should be exactly the amount that we can see in this room right here. Oh boy! And this is, again, the scariest room in the game, because if you so much as fall in that room, you would normally have to recollect all of the notes in the N64 version before then trying it again. I mean, of course, the smart thing to do would be to do it first, so that if you do die, it's not too punishing. But yep, here we go. Ah, the infamous engine room, says Miles Luigi. Don't trip. Good evening, though. You have that Super Mario CD beach theme with the radio announcer stuck in your head. Oh, isn't it good? In my Discord server, I, um, I posted the, the MP3 file of that, so you can listen to it on loop. I know I have been, but uh, thanks for joining, Miles Luigi. Hope you're having a great night. Uh, hello, Shelby Rice. Thanks, uh, thanks for stopping by the stream. Hope you're doing well and enjoying some Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, best use of gold feathers in the game, says Block Frog. Aside from, like, the final boss, probably. Baby Whale. Tugboat, says Raynock. I like that. Looks ominous, says David Ray. Here we go. So, we can do that. Now, see, if I had been smart, I would have defeated the guys at the top, because we are going to be facing a timed challenge in a second. Now, let's get, uh... Again, how many times am I going to freaking die in this room over stupid mumbo tokens that we don't need? So by hitting that switch in the previous room, it slows down these propellers, but it doesn't stop them completely, so you still have to do like a really well-placed jump. And if you hit them, they have horrible knockback that's almost guaranteed to kill you. So that's fun, right? And don't even think about rushing these. It's like, just wait till they're stopped. And the mumbo tokens against the wall are near impossible to collect without dying. We'll talk more about those when I get over there. Did you see that? I like that it looks like you can land on this, even though you can't really. And there's an engine room death for you all. That's how unforgiving it is. I guess I should have been doing the Talon Trot. Normally my strat is to jump, do this, and then jump immediately after. But just that little bit of an angle is enough to send me off the edge. But this is a great opportunity to demonstrate the Xbox 360 version. And not having to recollect everything. Happy days, everyone. Happy days. Because if we look at our totals... What have we got? Um, what's the other puzzle piece? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we got it. So, yeah, Xbox 360 version for the win. But, um, but now you understand why that room is so unforgiving. Don't forget to go back here and hit this switch again. F, F's in the chat. Thank you. Thanks for the F's. <laughs> um, to anyone who watched the last part, you would know the no death run had already been murdered um, by Mr. Vile. Because, yeah, he was just cheating all over the place in that run. But okay. So, yeah. That's the engine room, everyone. I'm playing worse than in my original Let's Play, but that was just kind of being silly. I feel like because the pressure's off, you know, start to slack, but I wasn't slacking. Just being silly. So let's just get both of these guys dead, because we can. And let's do this for real. <laughs> the engine room is hard, especially if you don't know about the third switch, says Super Tom. Um, GG, says Shelby. This is the Dark Souls of Banjo-Kazooie Jiggies. Aha, yes, the one with the switch coming up. Okay, so, I guess the, this, you know, using Talon Trot is probably the, the strat. Again, I usually use the, the flutter, but the slope seems to be extra, extra greased today. <laughs> Just like really greasy. He slid right off, even though it was like a one degree angle. Far less than you normally slide off of. So yeah, that's what we should have done. Thought I did it the other way, maybe I remember it wrong. But see, this, this, these, uh, these two mumbo tokens really suck. Because there's no time to stand over there, perform a backflip, and then get back to this platform before it's before it throws you off. You saw how unforgiving it is. Like, it just can't be done. 
It just cannot be done. I'm not convinced it's possible. <laughs> okay. But you can see how it was only very barely possible. <laughs> That's probably my first time ever getting one of those without dying. And see, you don't even dare try to do two at once. You will not make it. To me soon, RC Shaggy. Welcome. Yeah, next week, assuming we get this done. Assuming I haven't been uh, forgetting to press live or something all this time. We'd have to replay the whole game again so that you can see me play through Rusty Bucket Bay. Okay, can we do two for two? I don't have much confidence, but we'll see. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Let me see, this is the Dark, <laughs> Dark Souls of Um, death number one of probably many, says David Ray. Yeah, unfortunately. Did you see that? Did you even see that? I love trying to land on, like, the pipes that are down there. That, um... That don't really do anything, but it's still fun to kind of smack off them. So if you look inside the Banjo-Kazooie soundtrack, uh, there is an underwater version of the engine room theme because apparently it was thought in uh, at one time in development There might have been a way to flood the engine room with water and I guess you could have swam around it Imagine how much more forgiving and easier that would have been but honestly, I kind of like the how unforgiving it is I think the mumbo tokens are the, the two most annoying parts of this of this room And the fact that you know, I took that death and I still didn't even get the token is really silly but like look at it just freaking look at it well, I don't think you can get it by just jumping maybe we'll try maybe my whole life has been a lie you don't actually have to use a, a backflip to get those at all Daffy Duck in the chat welcome Daffy hope you're having a great evening like see it's a, it's, it's it can't be done it can't be done what else could you do to get some extra hype? Like... <laughs> Daniel with the emoji. Oh, I'm dead. I'm so dead. I'm so... Okay. Oh, it just feels like luck when I get that, but maybe. Maybe it's not. Okay, this is... So, you can do it from either this side or the other side. This one's the better one. Because it doesn't require any funky backflips. All right, so hitting one of those. Oh no, I hit the wrong one first. You know, just uh, just mentioning that this is the way you want to go back. Should have hit the switch second. There's also these pipes that I don't think have any purpose. They're just for show, or if you you know really want to impress your friends by running to the end of it. Oh, I forgot. Okay, well we're gonna have to come back anyway. I forgot. <laughs> it's funny. The first time I'm like, don't forget to hit the thing, and this time I forgot to hit the thing. So we got to run all the way out and come back in again. But yeah, this has been the engine room. And now you know why everybody hates it. Um, but yeah, I hope you're all having a good night. Get the computer room, Sonic Heroes. Um, ooh. All right, doing this backwards for the first time. But otherwise, yeah, the last Jiggy is, um, there's, there's a Jiggy in this room we're going to pick up. And then there's a Jiggy outside the ship, which was uh, briefly shown there. And that's all we need to do still in Rusty Bucket Bay. We could have been done, like, three hours ago. If not for a couple of silly spills. Also good to get rid of these guys, too. So one thing is when you come out of this door, it's sometimes hard to remember which end of the boat it is that you're running to to get the jiggy behind the propellers, but... So make sure you're aware of that before you head in there. <laughs> okay. Wow, remember through that window? How much fun it is in there? I wonder what Grunty does with her minions to get maintenance done with the engine room, right? I want to hear more of the backstory of, uh, of Grunty's minions. We need a spin-off, uh, Grunty's Inside Story, plus Grunty's Minions. Or was it the Grunty Superstar Saga plus Grunty's Minions? I forget. 3DS remakes of those games were so freaking weird. Woo! 
Okay, now that we've hit the switch, fingers crossed we can do this properly. So we can just go forward here now. Yeah, without hitting that other switch, these don't slow down at all. Funny that, you know, the game will remember the notes you've collected and such, but it won't remember that you've hit that switch. One hundo. One hundred notes to go. You're still mad we didn't get a Partners in Time remake. Right? Uh, I love Partners in Time. It always seemed to be, uh, for some reason, to get the short end of the stick when it comes to Mario and Luigi discussions. But to be completely honest, did Bowser's Inside Story even really need a remake? Like, Superstar Saga makes sense because it was a Game Boy Advance game, so update it on the 3DS, fine. But, you know, 2 and 3 were already DS games. I'm not sure that uh, they needed the, a 3DS version, but... And personally, I think I like the art style in like the original 3 games more than the what they started to do with the, uh, the 3DS. I don't trust this. Nah, see, I thought it might uh, spin one more time. Can I hit this, like, reset the clock? You can! Oh my gosh, yes! I wonder if that's, like, the first time that's ever been shown on video. And these have completely stopped moving. Nice. Okay. Is this stopped spinning? I really don't trust it. It's gonna spin, isn't it? Oh, I was just about to step on it, too. Okay. So yeah, it's a race now to those propellers at the back. Which is more nerve-wracking than you would think. On this massive ladder here. And if we screwed up, we gotta go all the way back and hit those switches again, so... Remember though, don't forget which is the back of the boat. And now try and get your camera arranged properly. And now we get a hilarious message from Grunty about how we're stuck behind her propellers, I think. No, I thought there was a funny message you got when that happened. Well, regardless, there's no way to get out of here but death now. You can try to get back out before the propellers boot up again. But... Just do it that way, because I think we've collected everything anyway. In fact, that's a speedrun strat, if anything, because it booted us right back to the start pad here. Alright, 40 minutes to finish up Rusty Bucket Bay, everyone. Once you die once, the no death run's dead. Might as well, uh, use it to your advantage. So that wasn't horrible. It could have been better, but it wasn't horrible. <laughs> just, just, uh, just let me pretend that anyway. And wow, funny that, you know, our air doesn't go down super fast anymore. Feels weird. Yeah, uh, Bowser's Inside Story, I think, was the more popular one. So it made more sense that they remade it, but at the same time, I still, uh, still really like Partners in Time. And here's that Witch Switch Jiggy just kind of thrown in the middle there. It's just the GBA title, but with the Bowser's minions added for the 3DS one, yes. I should make Mario and Luigi Collection on Switch. Yeah, so what happens with all of those properties now that Alpha Dream is gone? It's kind of like how, you know, once Sing was gone, you never thought you'd see Hotel Dusk or another code again. And then that suddenly popped up like 15 years later, so I guess anything's possible. Uh, you don't mind remaking Bells Inside Story? They shouldn't have skipped Hardest of Time. Yeah, I, I agree, Raynock, I agree. Just checked in there, doesn't seem to be any way to transfer my Nintendo account from a bricked Wii U to a new one. Oh, that's terrible, Super Tom, brother. Yeah, uh, it's... Uh, that's definitely, you know, you're, you are just demonstrating right there the kind of, you know, perils of digital games. And that was a big thing for a long time. You know, Nintendo wasn't uh, you know, very diligent when it came to having a uh, you know, connected account where if you something happened, you know, you could get your purchases back and such. So I hope, hope you can figure something out, but yeah, I'm sorry. It, it's it's a shame of but things we have to worry about when as digital gaming becomes more prominent. But okay, so that's that. I don't think there's anything else I need to worry about with this Switch, so... 
Proceeding on to new territory. You can't defeat these with like normal attacks. No, you I think the intended solution for this hallway is you're just supposed to use gold feathers. At least that's what I always did, even though it's kind of a waste. And that brings us to this room. And it's a little tough to see, but if we go down here, there's a cave with this guy. And that makes another cauldron connection. Why did it not show the guy I connected it with? Don't tell me I was in that freaking room at the beginning with the and I got that gold feather and I never woke up that cauldron in this in this playthrough. That is funny. That means we're gonna have to run back there in person too. <laughs> uh Okay, we'll make the trip uh trip back to this room easier anyway. But alright, up here we go. We already have enough to open that note door. We might as well leave it for now. And we'll do that after too. So when we hit this switch, oh man, this blew my mind as a kid. A jiggy panel appears. Ah, don't forget that mumbo token, because we never visited that room in this playthrough yet. Uh, appears in that room near the beginning, and oh my gosh, it blew my mind because it's like, I'm just so wondering, like, what was up with that room? So to finally figure out its purpose. Oh, I thought that was so cool. <laughs> but here we are, running back manually this time. Raynock laughing. Probably gonna have to hack and pirate a new one, download, but don't tell Nintendo. What? I'm emailing them right now. Is this the door? Yes, it is. I mean, I guess we could have used that other cauldron too. We're almost there. Again, I love Grentilda's Lair. I think it's such a fun hub world to explore. It's funny, Mario Galaxy 2 has come up in a few conversations recently. I don't know why it keeps coming up. Uh, and one thing I always think about that game is just how like low effort the hub world was compared to you know Galaxy 1 or any Mario 3D game really. Unless maybe like the you know if you get like really far into it. But I know that the you know Mario spaceship thing kinda gets some new areas and stuff as it goes on, but unless it gets like a lot bigger definitely seems like it pales in comparison to some of the other stuff out there. Alright, 36. And we should have enough for this. Requiring 15 pieces. I didn't wake him, says Christian. No, don't worry, we're gonna use him to, uh, to get back now, so that's why we're gonna go see him here. But yeah, the fact that we were in that room and I completely forgot to wake him the first time. This is such a strange playthrough, the way that it's like, you know, two parallel let's plays, kind of. That guy always seems to find the worst uh, position to be in. But yeah, one level down so far in about an hour. And you know, Click Clock would probably be about another hour. And then everything else. I think we'll make some good time tonight. That's probably one of the first times in my life I've ever seen... You know, this was the second one that I activated and not the other one. So, you know, it's nice to have first sometimes in your let's play. But with that, everyone, it's final level time. Click clock wood. We're assuming there's no glitches. We should get our 900th note in here and unlock that achievement. Brother wanted to port his stuff from a 3DS to another 3DS and he didn't know you had to get your files on. So he lost some of his stuff too. Oh, that's terrible. Again, uh, I hate transferring things from like one console to another and it always has to be so complicated. So, instead of it just being like, okay, take out the SD card, put it into another console, done. No, it has to be, has to be this massive involved freaking process. So yeah, Click Clock Wood is all about this one kind of tree and the area surrounding it that you play through in four different seasons. And each season also has like its own individual items and uh, stuff to do and collect. So it's easy to accidentally miss something. But yeah, here we are. Quick log wood, we're going way up there. And these guys, you can land in them with the transformation of this level. Or because I'll probably forget, we can also do that. 
But okay. Also, check the grass. I think it's mainly summer when they like to hide stuff in the grass. So, stay away from that right now. These buds, you can stand on them, barely. But you mainly... They're mainly kind of just for summer when they turn into bigger leaves. These guys are a pain. I've never understood why it shows that cutscene the first time you defeat one. But it does. What else we got around here? We got beaver guy down there. And I think there is a way you can hit that boulder with like a perfectly placed ground pound, people used to say, from, from the upper level. I've never gotten it to work myself. Maybe maybe it's easier on the 360 version or something. Like, where is that boulder exactly? If I was smart, I would have paid attention to that before I came up here. Ooh, it's like way over. I was almost kind of a good one, though. I'm kind of tempted to try that again. Can you look around in the water? Yes, you can. Okay, it's kind of there. There's no reason to break the boulder now, because... You can do it in summer, when the when the lake is dried up. But I've always kind of wanted to see what would happen if you could break it early. Like, right here, right? Oh, just to the side of it again. One more time. And this is this is killing our speedrun, but you know what? It's worth it. Like, the corner's there. Yeah, it's right, okay, it's directly beneath that corner. Easy to see. Naughty! Donkey Kong Country reference definitely looks that way! Uh, Big Phil. And of course there'd be lots of them in Donkey Kong 64. Except I think they were all blue in that game for some reason. Alright, let's see if we can do this once and for all. We've seen one glitch. Why not? Why not another? Ugh. Yeah, okay, it's not as easy as uh, as you would like it to be. But I'm sure I've read before somewhere that someone uh, was able to do that. There's probably a video of it. If it is true. Or could it just been a schoolyard rumor? Banjo-Kazooie was one of those games that... Much like Pokemon, had lots of rumors surrounding it. But okay, here we go. So again, since the level's broken up into four parts, I, you should expect to get about 25 notes per part. It's not always exactly accurate, though. I don't remember if when you get hit by those guys, they take off one health or two, but it's probably best just not to get hit. And then we won't have to worry about it. Another Mumbo token over there. Pick up some notes here. Now this is not immediately obvious, but there's this hole in the middle here, and what you need to do is put eggs into it. Basically, if you see a hole in this game, just shoot eggs in it. <laughs> That's the moral of Banjo-Kazooie. And you get kind of a flower thing coming out there. And here we there, jump over this hole. Again, just because I'll probably forget, if I see an item, I'm just gonna pick it up. So activating the Wonder Wing, the invincibility, instantly uses up a gold feather. There's nothing you can do to avoid that. And then it's every five or so seconds after, another one gets used up. So you really, wow, that is aggressive. Uh, so you really kind of, if like you're just doing it for a brief moment, Want to wrap it up as soon as possible before it continues to consume any additional feathers. But okay. I know there's a mumbo token in these vines, and that is uh, one of the ones that will despawn if we leave the room and, like, you know, get the other one. Like, yeah, so down there. So once I get the bee. Or no, actually, it's the boots I can use to grab that right now, right? So what's better, B transformation now, or climb as Banjo and B transformation after? I think we'll save the B transformation for second. We'll do the climb legit first. Let me see here. Wow, it's raining, says Daniel. Yeah, hopefully that's not completely messing up the stream. <laughs> raining in N64 games more likely than you think, but the other stuff that comes out with the eggs make great fertilizer. There you go. 
Okie dokie. So, we... Yeah, okay, so we'll do that after. And we made a complete loop around the tree now. I believe we have. We originally climbed up from these leaf uh, buds here. So let's go over here and grab these notes. So, yeah, there's no reason to spend the gold feather to get a gold feather, but if we do use the bee later, we could do that. So this was a challenge for summer. If you try to do that in the, in the spring, good luck to you. And there's all sorts of weird stuff hanging on branches here. Like, do we need a one-up? I feel like we got most of our one-ups back somehow. Could always go out there and get it just for fun anyway. Of course, like I said, you know, once we transform into the bee, like this is much easier to do. There you go. Again, having the ability to set the camera directly behind you is really useful. And that, uh, that, that ability does exist in the N64 version, just it's a little more hidden. And you get the whole Z and R or L at the same time. And it will put the camera behind you. And we got this hive going on here. There's a mumble token here. So we'll grab that. Even though we're definitely going to have to come back to that beehive with the bee after. And who loves these jumps going around awkward corners like that? This level definitely uh, tests you know, all the skills you've learned throughout the game. And I like that, you know? That's how a final level should be. Got this house thing going on here. Oh, look at this guy. Is there anything to do here right now? Okay, there's a mumbo token. Again, we could come back with the ability to fly, or we could risk certain death. That's the thing about this level, too, is if you have a really bad fall, uh, you could die, especially if you're already missing health. And again, remember, in the original Banjo-Kazooie, um, <laughs> that would mean getting all of the notes again, going through all four seasons again. So while as much as I'm not a fan of that feature, it did save us some time in Rusty Bucket Bay, so there is that. This is where it's very important to look at Banjo's shadow to see if you're properly placed over platforms or not. Like, that saved me right there. One game that did it really well is in Crash Bandicoot 4. You can turn on an option to have, like, a yellow circle beneath you at all times, and that is so useful for platforming. Hope that uh, other modern-day platforms take note on that one, because it was very well thought out. Honestly, Shaggy, I kind of wondered, too, if Banjo and Kazooie had the same boss treatment like Tui had. I wonder what bosses would fit these worlds. So yeah, in Banjo-Tooie, every single level has a boss fight, which is, you know, kind of cool. You know, if the levels are going to be super huge, I guess it makes sense to add in something like that. So it is kind of neat. You're right to think about what kind of bosses this game would have. Uh, the, uh, yeah, this game would have the levels in this one. You get the giant TNT guy who was in that last level. Yeah, he's definitely an anomaly, though. You're right. <laughs> Where am I? There we go. So one thing we gotta do is go up here. We saw an egg like this in Bubble Gloop Swamp, our favorite level. So it's Eerie, the eagle, and he has a thing we need to do in like each version of the level. So if you forget to crack that egg in this one and you move on to the other level, then you're going to have to redo a whole bunch of stuff. But okay, the last climb here. Let's not screw this one up. And this you have to do as Banjo, is there's a door at the top that you can't open up if you fly up here any other way. <laughs> Still pretty scary though. There you go. See, like you gotta break this open. Not even gonna touch that. And inside here, I think this is the same room in every season, so you might be able to, to do this in any season, not just spring. And that unlocks this room for the first jiggy. So look how much effort it took in this level just to get one jiggy. Ten minutes. Compared to other levels where it just feels like you're picking them up left, right, and center. I don't think there's anything else really notable in here. Oh yeah, there's another one up up there. But, yeah, that's about it.
Um, let me see here. Kind of wonder against the witch. Haven't played much of Tui. Feel like you need to give it another try. Yeah, I really, I'm really excited to play Tui after this because I've certainly played it less than Banjo Kazooie. Played through it less time, so I'm sure there'll be a couple of hilarious moments when I just kind of forget things. But okay, what we're gonna do now? Okay. I was hoping to fall all the way to the bottom. Did we hit the switch for summer? I forget where it even is. I think did we hit it? Regardless, let's go turn into the bee now. I think we've done everything as just banjo. Hello, Diego. Welcome. Hope you're having a great night. Thanks for stopping by. So this one, how do you get up there? Is there one we can stand on? Yes. Uh, let me see here. Shelby Rice, if you didn't know, an eagle's nest is called an eerie. So that bird's named well. So that's really funny because I like watching classic Regis Philbin, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And that was a question. Uh, I, I think, I, like, uh, like you said, I think, like, uh, you know, what's an eagle's nest called? And I remember, and I put the pieces together. It's like, oh, eerie. So maybe that's it. And it ended up being the right answer. So, it's funny watching Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. And like half the questions I can answer are just because of video game knowledge or The Simpsons or things like that. <laughs> Not because of any actual studying that I did. Hacks with the golden feathers says RC Shaggy. Um, I did hit the sun one. Thank you. Uh, let me see. The least favorite part is that gross facts about Gruntilda during the quiz are randomized each playthrough. And that's really bad for us because we have not been talking to Brent Tilda this time. We talked to her last time, but not this time. So I'm... Oh, yeah, so there was the switch right there. And it is indeed pushed in, hopefully. So, so yeah, um, we, we might just be guessing the Gruntilda questions. <laughs> Fingers crossed none of them show up when we're on a skull panel. The death run is, uh, the no death run's killed anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. But alright, so yeah, don't forget about, okay, we're not even high enough, maybe. There is a jiggy that you can only get to by flying somewhere on the tree, and it's pretty high up. I cannot fly any higher than this, so it has to be around here somewhere. It's also possible that we are too high. Oh, wait, no, we can still go higher. Maybe I should just take a step back for a second. If we look at the tree from afar, maybe it will become more obvious exactly where the heck we're going here. But welcome, everyone. Hope you're all having a great night. Oh, there it is. See, like, way up here. Hope you're all having a great night with Banjo-Kazooie. Two. A whole two. And we also want to go inside that beehive. And we can pick up some of these gold feathers too, if we wish. Never hurts to have too many of those. If you can get them. There's no way to like insta-drop as the bee. So you kind of gotta awkwardly land. <laughs> and then you can go get the stuff. There we go. Perfect. Um, okay, then the beehive, which should be over here. And is that it? Feel free to remind me if there's anything else I'm forgetting in springtime. You got 20 of the notes. Now, the majority of the notes are in summer. And you'll see why. They place a lot of notes around during the summertime. I think this is just for a Jinjo? All right, two Jinjos down. I think there's one per season in the other seasons. So with that, I think we're ready to move on. And you could, in that room we entered at the top with the Jiggy in it, there was that extra life up in the branches. You could go in there now with the bee since the door's open and fly and get that. But otherwise, I think we've got everything in here. So let's head out. You can position yourself on a skull panel, but even if you do get it wrong, you won't die. I've never done that, but that sounds amazing, actually. 
And uh, you cannot shoot with the B in this game. So you can press B all day long or Z, the triggers, nothing's gonna happen. Might need to find Brentilda, says Daniel. I, we haven't even talked to her once, which is kind of funny in this playthrough. I thought I, I made it kind of a joke to, to go out of our way to avoid her. Puzzle, puzzle piece in the middle of the hive. Yes, we will get that, but in a different season. But this time, we're on to summer. And I, is there another extra life up in these trees, too? Or it might just be the one from before. I'm surprised they didn't hide anything up here. How do you get the bee jiggy? Yeah, another. We'll, we'll see that again. It's a little confusing. Oh, it's like, you know, it tricks you into thinking it would be there. But now you can see why there's going to be so many notes in this season, because they are just placed all over the place. As you can see in front of us already. Before you do the quiz board game, remember to ask Brentilda. <laughs> Brentilda. Again, I think it's kind of funny if we don't. But it could bite me. We'll see. I also tend to be good at, uh, at guessing those for whatever reason. So see, the grass is like super tall now. These guys are also like twice the size, so that's fun. But yeah, you gotta look in the grass for hidden things. Also, these bees, usually tied to the beehives. Uh, in this area, they just kind of chase you. Regardless of if you've done anything to them or not. We gotta collect caterpillars to give to Eerie. And there's more caterpillars than you need. So that's like another weird collectible. That you don't have to get all of. So actually it might even be fall I'm thinking of. That has notes. As you can see, like, you know, there's feathers here. But I know one season replaces them all with notes. So he invites you up into his home. However, I, I'm sure people have glitched their way up into there. But you're not supposed to be able to get up into there at this moment. You're going to want to come back in another month. And if you go back to springtime, you know, I guess the, the flow of time is linear. So even if you go back there, it will still look like you didn't open his house. Okay, back across this bridge. What's in the middle of this season? Nothing, really. So from here, we can go over here. And actually, that reminds me, I think when I was down in the... <laughs> beautiful. The dried up lake there. I think the switch for the next room is actually at this dead end. Yes, so we will need to remember to get that before we leave. But hey, look who it is! Worms are tasty for birds, says RC Shaggy. <laughs> Took me ages to find more water. So that's that. So we don't need any more mumbo tokens. We've spent all the mumbo tokens that we're going to spend in the game. Any that we find now are just extras. And that shows you just how many extras there are. Yeah, so those guys who appear throughout the whole game do two damage to you. Meanwhile, the guys who only show up in the final level only do one. That's so strange. Is there another worm down there? Yes, there is. Wow! I didn't even see that guy. Okay, well, gives us a chance to come down here and get this guy. Nothing on that guy. And I guess we'll do this too. That was awkward. Why does Gobi sit by things that need water if he doesn't want to give them? <laughs> Asks Shelby. That is an excellent question. We appreciate his help though. He's always sitting in a very convenient spot. Yes, there's the house we open. And we'll head back up these leaves and go around the other way. Ooh, weird. Yeah, we had, like, made it to here anyway. Can 
Can we do a thing like... Oh, that was so pointlessly dangerous. Because I don't think there's any reason we want to come over here anyway. But there you go. And if we head down here now, we'll go to Mumbo's house just for fun. There might be like notes in it or something. But unfortunately, you can only transform into the bee. Oh, wow. Well, we got a custom piece of te uh, text down there. Bramble's referenced everyone. Donkey Kong Country 2 remake confirmed. Come in here. And you can only transform in the springtime. So that's it for transformations. We're done. Actually, that's not true. That's not true. We might see the bee again. And yeah, again, you're still giving you mumbo tokens, even though you don't need them. Uh, Robin Goblin. Um, like the challenges, change the season they did last time. Yeah, Oracle of Seasons is excellent. Both of the Oracle games are great. And it's amazing that they're both on Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pass now. Actually, I don't even think you need the Expansion Pass for Game Boy Color games. So that's incredible. If you have uh, access to that, definitely give them a shot. What's going on over here? I guess we'll grab that. Again, no B in this uh, season. So if you want to collect any items on top of those guys, you have to, to use Gold Feathers. And since the leaves have now sprouted, we can take this way up the tree... And by doing so, we will find a Jiggy. Now, if you fly to this platform, say, in springtime with the Bumblebee, I don't believe this Jiggy is there. You have to get it in summer. We are also skipping part of the tree, though, by doing this. So we might have to go back just to make sure we didn't miss anything. And there you go. Again, though, just for thoroughness sake, let's go back down here. Yeah, so see, we're missing missing all sorts of important things by going up the tree that way. Wow, yeah, they really... <laughs> that's, that's strange that they would do that. But see, now we can go into the... Oh, actually, there's nothing over there. Not going to the beehive this way. And this is where the fun begins. So if you want to talk about, you know, bosses in a level, this is kind of like the boss of this level. All right, Block Frog. <laughs> Fingers crossed for no more game-breaking glitches. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Very difficult boss. And I don't think there's anything else to collect in here. There we go. Yeah, gold feathers are really OP. But the, the cool thing, and I've mentioned this before, is that in Banjo-Tooie, you keep all of the moves that you learn in this game, plus learn a whole ton of additional moves in Banjo-Tooie, where most games, like Metroid, it's like you lose every power-up at the beginning of every game. They come up with some contrived reason. Where you gotta lose all those power-ups and find them again. But, you know, kudos to Banjo-Tooie, I've always thought, for actually letting you keep every single thing that you learn in the first game, plus adding, like, so many more new uh, moves as well. I've always thought that was so cool. But okay, that's good for those. But yeah, that means that you start with invincibility, like, right at the beginning, which is nice. But you lose your Cheeto cheats, though. So, like, it goes back to only being able to hold 10. But you can change that as the game goes on. Okay. <laughs> I'm just getting gold feathers back. You can see how useful they are. It's always nice to have a hearty supply of those. And I think that's it. I think, like, down here, there's nothing we've missed. Yeah, that's where the leaves were that we climbed up. Perfect! On we go. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Bottles teaches you in the first one, Jam Jars in the second one, yes. I, I really like the comment on my previous video, on the previous Banjo-Kazooie part. Or no, maybe it was, you know, two parts ago when the glitch happened. <laughs> and someone, it was like, Bottles gets his in the second game. And I was like, yeah, it, it's true, <laughs> when you look at it that way. Okay, so this. There's a Jiggy in here. 
But you have to do like a really scary jump to get it. Alright! If you don't get this in summer, I think there's a flight pad you can use in the fall to get it. But if I fall, hopefully it's not death. As I say. Ooh, look at that. Half gone. She's like, this guy is standing on a flight pad, but you can't do anything about it. You can't get that. That's just another one of those situations though, where like the, the camera angle in that room is real shenanigans. So good luck. What we can do though, we can do this. Get a bit of that health back. I mean, bees are already chasing us anyway. What's a few more? Is there anyone who's lucky enough to have never been stung by a bee? I remember that was like something I used to be proud of as a kid. Like, aha! All my friends have been stung, but not me until one day it finally happened and my reality was shattered. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal, but obviously the, the less you get stung, the better. I think there was one of these I didn't defeat. Yeah, this guy. What happened was I had just gone swimming in the summer and I wrapped my towel around me and somehow while in the process of doing that, like the bee got under the towel. So that, that my, my first experience being stung by a bee was not the most fun one. But uh, you know, now you know, so be careful if you go swimming this summer. Which speaking of which, it's supposed to be springtime now. We have worse weather right now where I live than we had like all winter. Despite the fact it's supposed to be spring. Also, look at these floating platforms not attached to anything. My immersion is completely ruined in this unrealistic experience. But here you go. As the seasons go on, these bridges get a little bit more completed. Like, I guess uh, it's supposed to be this guy who's building them? I guess there's nothing in this room in the in the summer. What if you get the jiggy and do the jig and fall? That would be interesting, wouldn't it? I don't um like when you get the jiggy, it typically kind of keeps you like where you were already standing. So I'm not sure if you could do that. Like there's probably hilarious glitches. Uh, if you're in the middle of the animation, I doubt you would take damage though. I feel like the game wouldn't do that, but. So that's that. Can we hit that window from here? I'm curious. No, we're not high enough. Alright, press an R. And do we have enough worms? Or caterpillars, though. My bad. Uh, don't remember it being hit by a bee, but mosquitoes. Yeah, mosquitoes suck too. What's that? Uh, did you know about the bottles revenge mode in Banjo 2? used to get a game shark to unlock it. Yeah, people think that, you know, that might have been something unlockable with stop and swap. Although, again, also possible it had nothing to do with it. It was just a completely unused feature as well. But there's so much that uh, is discovered when you look inside the ROMs and, you know, unused things. And there's so much that kind of, uh, you know, kept the flame of the stop and wop rumor fire going. And then once again, yeah, I'm pretty sure, again, this room is the same in all seasons. So there's not going to be anything that we need to collect in here. The one-up probably still stuck in the rafters that we never got. Like, can you get that without... Actually, I think we're... No, we're not low on health. We did end up getting a bit more. You, know, you don't even need the bee to get that. Unless there's even another one out here. Well, that might have been it. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yes, uh, I beat that back in the day. And I'm definitely up for replaying it. As part of Rare Bear Thursday. Because it's just been so long. I think that could be fun. Uh, so as for summer... Unless anyone has any objections, I think we've done everything that there is to do here. Like we went to Mumbo's, he's useless. We opened up the door to Autumn. 
Do you call it fall or autumn? I don't really want to say the word fall because that will probably mean I'm going to fall. But I think we're pretty done in this season. What? I was trying so carefully not to take any damage, and that was still, like, just barely enough distance. And I was going to get my health back from this guy, and he got me. But okay, I think summer is over. Let's head on to autumn. Doll. <laughs> Fall, says Daniel. Yeah, Grunty's Revenge, yes. Yeah, it's, it's really cool, you know, even though the whole Microsoft Rareware thing happened. You know, they could still make uh, portable games for a while, which was interesting. Wait a second here. Alright, let's go. So, I think this is the season. Yeah, where notes are, like, everywhere. So, this is where we're going to get the majority of the notes that we're still missing. And don't forget, once we hit 900... Oh, he needs 10 more caterpillars. Okay, so, still need to keep hunting for him. Yeah, once we get 100 notes are in this level... We get that sweet, sweet achievement. Get our gamer score ever closer to being the highest there ever was. Is gamer score still like a thing? Like, I guess whenever a new Xbox game comes out, it must still have achievements, right? I just don't hear anyone talking about gamer score anymore. Which I think it's a cool concept. Just like, you know, trophies and stuff. I thought they were really cool. There was always that hope that Nintendo might do something similar. Unfortunately, they did not. Here we go. Is there anything here? Oh, caterpillar. So now we can swim up to the naughty guy's house and get that puzzle piece. Remember, you can just hold the swim button. No need to rapidly press it. These are probably, like, two really easily missable notes. Um, it takes place... I, I think Grunty's Revenge, yeah, after... Well, I don't know how much people want me to talk about the plot of that game. But, yes. I think, you know, after Grunty's Revenge, technically. Or, sorry, after Banjo-Tooie, technically. Yeah, the, the plot of that game is very interesting. There's anything else really underwater to get? I see a Jinjo from here. Again, it's so weird how uh, slowly air decreases in this level compared to like the last one. Also, I like how we still have the that guy's house music going because we never surfaced from the water. <laughs> I like how he still hurts you even when he was like passed out. There you go, three seasons worth of work for one Jiggy. That's it, I'm off to the lava world. They'll never find me there. So the funniest part is that it looks like during development, there were plans for there to be a lava world at one point. And we even saw that one part of Grentilda's lair that had like that really awkward looking lava, which people would suspect might have been used for a part of her lair, which would have had the entrance to a lava level. But it's funny what they end up doing with that comment. Like, that's some that's some plan in the head right there. I was literally in attack mode when I got hit. Oh, okay, we missed this guy anyway, so you no, know, fair enough. Maybe he was doing us a favor. And again, this is a time when you have to use gold feathers. Well, was that two damage from that guy? Ooh, it's kind of scary. Better go beat someone up and take their life to to compensate. And so somehow here I got hit by this guy. And this is also one of like the only times you'll ever see a note. Or any item that's not on the ground. It's very awkward.
think we did this bridge thing. Oh, we could get some health here if we needed it. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Um, dumb question. Haven't learned. Yeah, no, not a dumb question at all. <laughs> yeah, very good RC Shaggy. But yeah, I love uh, you know continuity like that. Getting closer though. We're almost done. How many notes we got here? 56. So for a long time in my original childhood playthrough of Banjo Kazooie, I had like 990 notes. No, sorry, not 990. 890. Uh, because I got like right to the end of this and then I died. And I was like, I'm not going to replay that whole level just to get those last few notes. But finally, eventually I did it. But yeah, it was always uh, it was always rough in the 64 one. If you died, you had to have to get them all again. That's <laughs> such an awkward job. I mean, you probably don't even have to do that, but... Alright. And again, we're gonna go visit Mumbo, even though, like I said, there's no transformations in any other season. I'm just looking around the vines here. That's right, this is also a slippery platform. And I guess you do actually have to come in here because there's notes up in his, like, rafters here. And as you can see, we already have enough Mumbo tokens to pay for, like, this level again. If we had to. And yeah, there's not really a better way to, to get back to the, to the tree than you have to go all the way around here. But it's funny those common themes you see in Rareware games, like they just loved brambles after Donkey Kong Country 2. For whatever reason, started sticking them everywhere. As like a, you know, insert harmful thing. Alright, so we're going up this ramp now. It looks like we have a few notes to get on top of that guy, so we'll do that here. Again, I'm running a little low on gold feathers, as much fun as it is to do silly things like defeat all the enemies with gold feathers. We do want to make sure we have some for those essential situations. And the leaves that go up the tree now are like starting to shrivel up, they've turned brown. There's no reason to do that challenge again. If you do it in autumn instead of summer, I wonder if the Jiggy's still there. But since we got the Jiggy in summer, there's no reason to do it. In autumn? That was really lucky. There was a second I was sure that was not going to work or, or end well. And look at this guy. This is a, this is a rough one. Of course, everyone knows what's coming up after this level. No doubt everyone's excited for that. It's a part of the game that you only get the chance to play once. And as a kid, it was like, oh man, you know, I just kind of want to keep playing the game and do that. Because it was just so cool. Uh, oh no, no, don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. <laughs> Somehow, we only lost one health from that massive fall. Figured it was going to be more, but alright. And that's the nastiest part too, is you're climbing up the tree. And you get hit by one of those guys. After all the incredible platforming we did too, I always take the easy hits. It's my thing. And I'm just waiting for one of these guys to not be dead and surprise me. Seems like we did pretty well with them though. And where was that guy anyway? One of these? Or no, it was this guy, I guess. So in terms of the beehive, I think, I don't think there's much to do with it anymore. Oh, there's notes in here. <laughs> Again, so even when you think, all right, I've done that thing in another season, you always got to double check. Miles Kinslow with the subscription. Thank you so much. Really hope you're enjoying the stream and having a great night. Banjo Kazooie Crunchy's Revenge is the second story wise. Notes in Mumbo's hut feel like cheating. Most people wouldn't think of looking there. Yeah, again, like I said, it's like you really have to do just four complete sweeps of this level. Because skipping any area that you think you're done with and don't have to go back to is going to be like the one place you miss something really important. Even as of now, I'm still nervous. Like, what if we miss something somewhere? 
Again, and there's no reason to even collect these guys, but for some reason risking having to spend like five minutes reclimbing the tree on that. Gold feathers, though. I will take gold feathers. I hear a worm and caterpillar guy somewhere. Look at they finished building the treehouse, everybody! Where was that worm guy? Down? Yes. We only needed ten. So we're already good in that regard. And this bridge is now complete. No need to jump over awkward holes, or at least for the most part. <laughs> Just uh, avoid that guy. Alright, here's Nabbit. He needs six more acorns. We got you with the subscription. Thank you so much. Really happy to see so many people enjoying the stream. Because who doesn't love Banjo-Kazooie? Again, like even though I, in par as part of this playthrough, for those who might not have seen that, because we're playing the Xbox 360 version, and notes are saved that you collect, even if you leave a level, even if you die, we did the bottles bonus challenge and ba uh, challenges in Banjo's house before playing all of the levels. And in those challenges, you're completing a puzzle, putting the pieces of a puzzle together that show like a video of Banjo playing parts of the level at the same time. And in some of those videos, he collects some notes. And that's fine in the uh, in the 64 version. It doesn't cause a problem because notes reappear when a level is left and you come back anyway. But in the 360 version, because of that fact that notes that are collected stay collected, all of the notes that Banjo collected in those videos did not appear once I reached the level myself. And thus, we wouldn't have been able to get 100% completion. So, I had to replay over half the game. <laughs> Um, to, you know, get the save file that we have now, which we can actually 100% complete. But I just love Banjo-Kazooie so much that it's like it wasn't even really that much of an issue. Alright, now this one kind of sucks. Did you have to do, like, a leap of faith? We need to get that one first, but leap of faith onto that bridge down there. Which is kind of scary. Is this lined up? A little more, a little more, a little more. That should be good. Perfect. I think that's all of them? No, I think one more down this side. Don't forget the Talon Trot. You will definitely slide down this. But okay, there you go. We got all of his acorns back. You can't believe that's a real glitch, Diego. I mean, it makes total sense, and I think, again, I think that they patched it for later versions. But, but yeah, it is pretty silly. Alright, seven jiggies. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't know where I am. Oh, did you see that mumbo token on the leaves there? Hmm. And then again, I don't think there's any way to fly and get that. So do they really require you to do some tricky jumps? Let's see if we can climb the tree this way. Huh. For all about that. Look at this little tiny jump pad. I love it. But yeah, that's 30 extra mumbo tokens. Like I said, somewhere between 30 and 40 spares in the game. Where am I going? Oh, this is just like the bonus leaf, right? There you go. It was worth falling off to get to see me replay it like that. And where does this take us to? Okay, back to here. And we didn't defeat this guy the last time, which kind of scares me. No, my health! Let him have it. Alright, so one more time. We're going to try this climb to the top. We did go inside his house in this season. Yes, because there was an egg corn in there. Here's the switch for the final season. Unless they've invented the fifth one while I wasn't looking. Shelby, he eats hundreds of acorns and only needs four in the spring, right? Um, like, yeah, in the autumn, something happened to those ones, I guess. We have to go get more. 
And again, here's another caterpillar. Lots of extras of those guys as well. And there's no, like, counter that keeps track or anything, so... I don't know if we got them all. We probably did. They're not, like, super well hidden. And you've got to do it one by one. <laughs> yeah, the acorns are an easy way to fall, Super Tom, brother. Um, let me see. And there we go. So I think he's going to go to sleep like one more time. And we have to climb all the way back up here again in the winter to finally claim the prize. For taking care of this guy for a whole year. And is there any reason to even climb this part? I think that uh, there's a little more leeway as the, as the year has gone on in ascending these platforms. So while, again, I think you can do this door on like any season. So if you do it at spring, you're just kind of, uh, you know, punishing yourself. You're making it more difficult. And is the one up in a different spot in each season or is it consistent? Doesn't look like there's anything in there. All right, so we might as well waste one more gold feather. And again, actually we're gonna use a couple gold feathers here anyway, as we fall. I always forget that it's not a very far fall because the beehive is right there. Oh, did, I don't, did we ever get the one on top of the flower? How did I think about it? I don't think we did. Aha! I think we didn't forget that. Beautiful shot of Banjo and Kazooie there. Two Jiggies left. Again, one from Eerie. Is there another one in Winter? Oh yes, because we need uh, one more Jinjo. And that's going to be in Winter. So there you go! We are making good progress through Click Clock Wood. What's our time so far? I didn't even notice we got back up to nine lives. Just goes to show how many one-ups are laying around. Alright, not even an hour yet, but really it did look like kind of like what I predicted. An hour, so 15 minutes per season. Not too shabby. Caterpillars will often invade your tomatoes if you have a vegetable garden. We used to have a bush in our backyard, and back in those days, when I was a kid, there would just be caterpillars on everything. And we got rid of the bush, and just for whatever reason, the caterpillars went with it. Um, but yeah, you're right, we used to grow tomatoes in the backyard. Jalapeno peppers as well. I'm not too into the spicy foods, so. But, uh. But yeah, someone liked jalapeno peppers and they would try to put it with everything. But okay, here you go. Winter time! Which, again, today, even though it's spring, it feels much more like winter where I am. And the cool thing about this season. And how many notes are we down to? 16 more notes. Is that you actually get a flying pad in the winter. So that gives us much more mobility. Oh yeah, these guys come back too. I had to get one more kind of feature of these guys. All of the chomping plants are, are dead though, so we can just kind of grab the prize without too much effort. And we'll visit Mumbo's house one more time. And this is a funny one. Mumbo's on vacation, you hairy fool. Uh, just for that, take that. Why Mumbo left a beehive in charge of his hut? <laughs> Anyone's guess? Alright, where are those remaining notes? Again, we'll fly for sure. But it's a matter of, I want to check the lower down areas too. Okay, we would have missed this Mumbo token. On top of this guy. All that effort we put in just for it to die in the winter. I guess no different than, than real plants, real gardens. Unless you get some of those flowers that come back in like the spring automatically, those are always cool. But okay, there's a flying pad up there as well. One thing though, before we go up there, and this is a scary moment. This is like if you're on the 64, this is the last thing you do because it's easy to screw up. Freezing cold water that acts like the oil from Rusty Bucket Bay where air will go down twice as fast. And what we're doing here is we're going to Naughty's hole over here. And only in the winter are you able to come up here and get the empty honeycomb inside. I almost said the final one, but no. It's funny, both empty honeycombs are in winter time. It's pretty funny. One to go. No notes though, so it's like you don't have to do this Unless you're after that honeycomb. And then once you've got it, that's it. 
Now, the, the, the swim back is kind of scary, because if you weren't paying attention, it's like, oh god, where's the hole that I came from? You might have noticed that to the right there is also a 1-up that you would, could for some reason, try and go and get. Um, but, like, why? Why would you do that? And again, you're just holding the swim button. But I don't like the, um... This, this, this ice. It's so thin that sometimes I accidentally get, like, pulled back under it. Because of, like, a hit detection issue sort of thing. But thankfully, right there, we escaped perfectly fine. And I think it's time to start flying. Let's see what we got going on in the chat for a second. Uh, thanks for all the foreground objects getting in the way of the camera rare, says Super. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um... Jalapeno. Andrew, noticed you subscribed. Oh, 24.4 and I'm at 24.6. Thank you so much, Hack and Quacken, for noticing that. So close to 25k. We're almost a quarter of the way to the big 100k. And I think it'd be so cool to get like that silver plaque and stick it up on the wall somewhere as a collector. Naturally, you'd assume that. You know, I, I, something like that would just be so neat to add to the to the collection. But I'm very happy with everyone who's here and who's enjoying the streams. Certainly cannot complain. We're having a lot of fun lately. So here's some scary kind of notes. I guess we could take out this guy. But yeah, they'd be a quarter of a way to 100,000. It's pretty cool. And I certainly plan to, to keep it up and we'll see how just how far we can go. Don't be afraid to, to share the channel with your friends, with your family, with your dog and cat. And yeah, I hope all of you just continue enjoying the streams and videos. Okay, what else we got going on here? We got gold feathers, if I really wanted to. Hmm, it's a tough choice. Because we're also dealing with ice physics now, which is where, <laughs> like, see, I'm almost slide off the edge there. I mean, I can take this gold feather. No problem. Like, this gold feather just doesn't seem too bad. Okay, very good. And we continue. So this last empty honeycomb we're gonna get was one of the very last ones I ever found. Like, uh, there's a lot of empty honeycombs that were like some of the last things I found in the game. And it's funny too, because empty honeycombs, the last six don't do anything. So it's like, even if you miss them, it's like no big deal. But in, yeah, in my case, there's one in Treasure Trove Cove, the last one in this level. I know that the one in Clanker's Cavern, I think the one that's like under that pipe part. I don't remember if that one took me a long time to find, but I still, I do remember it being like, oh my gosh, when I finally discovered where it was. It was, it was a pretty tricky one. But yeah, they really did a good job of hiding the empty honeycombs. I, I appreciate that. Let's see if we can fly right back up to where we were. And I don't think there's any prize in this level for defeating all of the snowman dudes. Unlike in Freeze Easy Peak where you got a Jiggy for that. I do see Jiggies on top of the frozen house guy here though. Which you can't even go inside anymore. Like how am I supposed to... Hmm. Maybe if I need to do that on top. Can you get up there again? Can I jump on you and like get there? <laughs> Something like that? Because as you saw, you know, I was sliding. I've got to be able to do that. Even though I'm sure I've never done this in my life. I'm doing something horribly wrong. But yeah. Maybe if I just backflip up there? <laughs> it feels really weird. But all right. Ten, nine, eight notes to go. Watch, there'll be like two that still somehow glitched out. Did I get everything here? Oh, there's still a gold feather inside that guy. Which, I don't know why I would risk that. Oh, and there's still ice physics there too. Okay, okay. This is kind of scary. Oh, no, 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 you didn't just do that. Okay, okay, there's a, there's a flying pad right here, so we'll be fine. But yeah, you can never rest in this level. Something's always attacking you. And those snowman guys are around. Like, look at this guy. Ooh, you almost forgot about the witch switch, too. So thanks for reminding me of that. Yeah, 
Yeah, I did see that come up in my recommendeds. How much of Banjo-Kazooie can you beat without Kazooie? And I'm sure there's probably ways to, to get around a whole bunch of different things. Alright. Again, this uh, winter is so nice because even when you hit the bottom, you can quickly get right back up there. But you definitely want to make sure you have a lot of red feathers for this. So you probably want to enter the Cheeto code for red feathers by this point. Got stuck on something there. So one thing we got to do while flying, and this again was one of the last... Not this. <laughs> but this was one of the last things I ever found in this game. And I always noticed this window. That's like, that's kind of weird, right? You gotta go inside here. For the final empty honeycomb. As I get totally destroyed. There it is. Fifteen gamer score, everyone. All right, <laughs> now we're true gamers. But yeah, you don't get any additional health for collecting the six, the, the last six empty honeycombs for some reason. It's never made any sense at all why that's the case. Like I guess when you pause, you know, maybe it will look different in the HD version. Like, like see, there's there's no room for any more pieces. I wonder if at one point there weren't six pieces in Spiral Mountain. Because if you take those out, then you know, it makes a little more sense. But like they added those in at some point for some reason, and then they just decided to make the last six of them useless. Because considering how hard you have to work for them, it is a shame that they don't really do anything. But we got gamer score, everyone. That's all that matters. <laughs> What's that uh, hack and clacking? It's called challenge runs for a reason. Why not make it more challenging by doing it on a console? Says hack and clacking. Um, Blue Jinjo is on top of Mumbo's skull head. Oh, did I, did I forget to grab that guy? Well, thank you. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to do that. And I, I'm just, like, testing fate, getting so close to this guy. Should have taken him out with the thing while I was flying. Anything down there this time? No. I like how he doesn't do anything if you're just this close. Like, you just bounce off him, too. He doesn't even hurt you. But okay. Almost to the top. <laughs> Thank goodness we can fly. Where's my... I don't even know where I'm sliding to. That was kind of funny watching them slide down like that. Alright. This is all to get the Jinjo. All according to Kate Cockle. Last Jinjo of the game. Oh, we got a gamer picture, everyone. Bear win gamer pick to spruce up gamer profile. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Mumbo. Thank you. And, and so what exactly was the gamer pick for? I guess for finding all of the Jinjos. There's, there's some custom text, everyone, you'll never see if you play the 64 version. Only here on the game display. How much? How many other people like actually play the Xbox version, I wonder, compared to... This one. But okay, and the last Jiggy, too, should be from this guy. <laughs> I left one note up there. We're going to have to go back and get Will we get a gamer picture for uh, getting all the Jiggies as well? Let's see. Actually, that's not all of the Jiggies in the game now that I think about it, because there are, uh, still is the last one in uh, Ingrid Tilda's lair. So, I got you all excited for nothing. But, uh, but Shelby, we had eight health before. Because you start the game with five, you get an additional one for the six empty honeycombs in Spiral Mountain, and then there's 18 empty honeycombs to each per nine levels. So yeah, the last six... It might, it might have filled my health back to, like, full. <laughs> that might be what you're referring to. Because it will do that if you're missing any health. But uh, it did not add any additional sections, which is just, like, so weird, right? Did I actually manage to do that? Did I actually manage to do that? We're, we're going to work for that last, uh, that last note, everyone. 
whether you like it or not. And this would be really scary if this was like the N64 version, where if I die now, I'll have to replay the whole level for one note. This is just an excuse to do more flying. Because who doesn't love flying? But I am just really getting stuck on like the bottom of every branch. There we go. Get ready for another gamer pick, everyone. Probably not. 25 Gamer Store. Music Maestro. There you go. No gamer pick, though. Only Jinjos are worthy of handing those out. And again, I don't think there's anything different about this room. So I believe we're done. Click clock wood, we can double check. And well, if, we, if we can get out in seven seconds, we can say that we did it in under an hour. Uh, there you go, everyone. That is every level of the game complete, with the exception of the last... Oh, that's right, I, I can't forget. With the exception of the last Jiggy, we have to go grab in Grunty's Lair. So let's go do that. Oof again, says Daniel. That's what we do here. Lots of oofs on this channel. Yes, I love getting stuck on everything. Oh, we almost fell right into that hole. That would have been kind of fun. But okay, we're done. With the exception of one thing we got to do on the way out. And then it's everyone's favorite part of the game coming right up after that. See, like, why would you ever go get that one up? In the last part we did discover, though, that if you have nine lives and you continue collecting them, it will continue adding additional lives to, to the counter, even if it doesn't show up. Wow, we're just getting absolutely destroyed by this guy. And in fact, I don't mind the hope that you will drop, because it's probably best to go into the, the upcoming part with maximum HP. But yeah, so just like Donkey Kong Country, it's like the number is just a suggestion. You can totally exceed it if you wish. Yes, Super Tom, exactly. That's why we ought to revisit Spring here ever so briefly to grab that dude. That's the best way up this thing. Can we do an epic climb with these things again? See, like sometimes I can do amazing platforming and other times I just botch it all day. <laughs> oh wow, that was amazing. And I guess we do need the red feathers now. Not really. But we're missing quite a few of them. There you go, 34 mumbo tokens. Looks like it's gonna be the amount that we're left over with. You, oh, you find big hidden feature spell. Mumbo turn Banjo into T-Rex Crush Witch Easy. Changed mind. T-Rex spell too good for this game. Mama will keep for next game. <laughs> oh boy. I'm excited for Tui. I really am. It's been so long since I've beat Banjo Tui. Well, Alright, here we go. So Click Clockwood was pretty fun, again. It's, it's a long level because you're replaying the same thing essentially four times, but I think it's pretty cool. Definitely an interesting choice of theme for like the final level of a game. To be, you know, so, so natural. What's the difference between a honey badger and a wolverine? <laughs> I feel like I'm walking into something here. Hopefully we got everything. We didn't miss any mumbo tokens this time. And that wraps up, for real this time, the final level. I think there's a one-up on top of uh, level two. Not that we need it. But where we're really going is way up there. Again, this is another one of those creative which switches that I like, where it's like, okay, we're actually, you know, using the transformation from the level to fly up here and get this, which is pretty cool. 
And that's the final Jiggy, everybody. And we don't even get to see the dance for the last time because we're in B form. But all right, are you ready? Are you ready for the best part of Banjo-Kazooie? Here we go. A honey badger doesn't care, but Wolverine is the best. It is at what it does. Interesting that there's no achievement for getting all of the Jiggies. But here you go, everyone. Oh, so for... As a kid, I spent so long trying to, like, bust open these things that say question marks. Because there are doors that kind of look like this in Donkey Kong 64. <laughs> so, but just another thing that, you know, as a kid, you could be like, Look at that! It's different from everything else. Spend four hours trying to do a thing with it. But here it is, everyone. At last. Every game should have a board game. Like, there's no excuse. So one of the achievements was to win the star prize, and yeah, that's just that's just a, that's just your prize for winning. Look at that. Is everyone ready for some trivia? I wonder what they did when they localized this to other regions. Like, did everything rhyme there as well? <laughs> or did they just like, ah, screw it. Just... We got it. The most scary part going around this so we don't accidentally step on and have to redo everything. But there you go, everyone. Look at the board. I always do the left side. I always go around the left. I wish there was a way to replay it, to take different paths. But you can see there's a lot more skull panels on the right side. Can't even change the camera here to look. There's the Joker panels, but all right, everyone. General trivia. Okay, so it's A. To look like we have no doubt. In which season is there a drought? Does everyone remember? That is summer. And they boo you when you get it right. Now this is so fun. Like I love questions of like, you know, where is this picture from? Sometimes it's like really abstract too. Okay, that's that's an easy enough one. This is from Golby's Valley. Um, alrighty. So see... We didn't, uh, we didn't talk to Brentilda at all, so it's scary not knowing what kind of things could come up there. But we're gonna do this. Here's three facts on Freeze Easy Peak. The one that's true is what you seek. Okay. Five giant ice cubes, oh my gosh. Five giant snowmen. There's only four, right? Boggy and his three kids, but it has you. Like, it features you. But see, but, the, but Banjo makes five. Question on the sounds I play, get it wrong to make my day. Dirty Harry here. Which character has this dumb voice? That's a good question. Who does have that voice? Slapper the massive whale. Is it the turtle? Yeah. Okay. 
So here comes the Joker space. I think you only get one chance to get these right. But if we do, we get two Jokers that can be used to skip any spaces we like. Or is it just a Joker? I just thought it was two. We pick up items on the ground. Okay, this should be easy. This should be easy. One up. <laughs> we, we picked up enough of those. Extra, extra wife! Extra wife! That's awesome! It is two jokers. Speaking of one-ups, there's one right over there. But you have to pass the skull space to get to it. And this is insta-death. And like, we don't need lives, so there's no reason why we'd ever go over there. That is definitely Rusty Bucket Bay. Extra wife in a Nintendo game, right? Rusty Bay's whistles. What's the code? It was 321. No, no, no. 312111. Yes. 312111. And here's the last space I don't I think we stepped on. So these are timed challenges based on like mini games and bosses from throughout the game. These are really cool. And it's random too. Oh, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Not him. Anyone but him. But we do get the shoes this time. So that's a thing. I'm sure it's going to be just as unfair as it was the last time. Oh. For anyone who didn't see the, the part 3 where we replayed this. There was some times where it's like he's way faster than he should be. I don't know why Rareware games have such bad rubber banding. We're like, yeah, okay, I'm doing well. And then the computer will just, just completely destroy you. Because like you're not allowed to get that much of a lead. But it like overcompensates. Oh no. Oh no. Please turn red again. Thank you. There's like all oh, these nice juicy red guys right here. Please let that count. Sir. No. Oh no, the guys I want are disappearing. Okay, red, red, red. Yes! Yes! Redemption! Redemption! Ah! Oh. A speedy shoe should help a bit. Yes, they did. They certainly did. Alright, our first time to answer a question about Grunty. Patrick <laughs> Monthly thinks I'm hot. What did I do on the cover shot? We're gonna say... Long John's. Ah! Oh. <laughs> And it's all guessing. Do my hair, see it flow. What's it washed with? Like the only thing that could help is if we remember from last time. It's not going to be the same. Aha! Okay, second try. So here's a scary thought. You know, do we try a skull space? Because the way that I do the board, as long as we get all of The, the jokers. Like, you can skip all of them. Like that. <laughs> Music time! Wow, remember that one all those years ago? I hope there's like a, like a fake level that doesn't even exist in the game. Mad Mumbo's Mansion, yes! Uh, Mumbo's Mount. I like seeing what silly things they come up with for the fake answers. Big Oak Grew, which of these is the one that's true? Squirrel is outside in winter. That's not true. Grass is highest in autumn, no. Leaves are largest in summer, yes. 
Well, as long as anyone was paying attention, we should all know that one. In the picture on my screen, do you know where you've been? That is definitely Mad Monster Mansion. Clankers Cavern, Rusty Bucket Bay. Very nice. All right, guessing time again. Like them fried, they're quite a treat. What for breakfast do I eat? I'm trying to remember, it was tadpoles on toast in the first playthrough? Ah. <laughs> Maybe we get to see more of this text. Yes, that's the way creds are happier today. Is it now? Let me think. What's, what is Grunty's favorite drink? Smoothie elephant sweat. Ah! There you go. Alright, hopefully this one's answerable. One doesn't exist for... Wait, what? The Monsters Mansion? Which is it? There's a bathroom. There's no kitchen in Mad Monster Mansion. Alright. Listen carefully to this tune, which will from for you. Ooh, Clanker's Cavern, very nice. Clanker's Clock, hey, that sounds like a Mario 64 level click clock would. I like how it seems like with the, the background music questions, there's like always a fake. Remember, but we'll see. This is heard. Where would you be? It's definitely it's um it's the walrus's cave. Giant mechanical whale. Let's go. Walrus cave. All right, another time challenge, everyone. <laughs> do we do we do our trick with this one? There's not really any reason not to. All right, but that's right. There's no time limit originally, but they add a time limit for the reef fight. That's already running before you even actually start the fight. There you go. Golden Feathers is Super Tom Brother. Yeah, that's certainly what time it was. On Treasure Trove, there is a boat. What's its name? It doesn't float. I think it's the Salty Hippo. Yeah, all right. That's like digging deep, because I didn't see that this playthrough. I never even thought about it. See the picture on your screen? Where have we been? That is Rusty Bucket Bay. We fell into that window by accident. Clanker's Cavern, Mad Monster Mansion. Nope. All right, two grunty questions, everyone. Looks <laughs> as school were never thin. What award did I always win? <laughs> sweatiest socks. Let's do sweatiest socks. All right. Keep up the guessing. You know, the muscles taut. Again, remember, those answers are um, randomized every time. Most enjoyable sport. Belly. Why not? Heck yeah! Let's go. Oh, pick that up. Why not? We don't need that many more. That's the walrus again? Walrus the walrus. Snorkel the dolphin. Rob, that's not even a real character. There we go. Oh, another time to challenge. Uh-oh. And I'm out of gold feathers. Oh, okay. Well, actually, do I have a gold feather to at least defeat that guy? Time is tight, but that's the catch. Okay, 75 seconds instead of 100. But is it the same positions again? I don't think it ever changes. Yeah, it is too. Where was Kazumi again? Not the one though. Um, the note's like way back to the end, right? 
Is it still the two gingers in the corner? Yes. So yeah, it never does change. So I should just be memorizing this. Which one was this one? I don't think we've seen you yet. Red Feather. Mumbo's here, right? No. Shoot, where was the blue egg? Red Feather was here? That's Kazooie. Red Feather. Feather. <laughs> Not my best performance, but uh, it, it got it done. Uh, you don't like enemies that require a golden feather to kill, right? I mean, I guess we could have stunned them temporarily, but whew. Uh, it's not that big a deal if like we had lost that. I wonder if when you do the skull spaces, can you get like a, like a timed challenge mixed into that? Because I believe the skull spaces pick from any category. And the only reason I'm scared to do them is because if it's a grunty question, you know, that will be the time we don't get it right. Which facts made up by the old cow? Two crocodiles. No. Oh, is made up. So we want the false one. Okay. So I'm going to skip this. Actually, I can skip all of them. Twenty gamer score, yeah. Barely said Daniel. It counted. It counted. And that's it, everyone. We beat the game. Yeah, this is interesting. Which fry should we take, Kazooie? What is that even to the left? Like some washing machine thing? I don't know, the doll's kind of cool. And that's it, everyone! You get the credits! <laughs> so, yeah, Banjo-Kazooie is just such a fun game. Like, oh my gosh. Like... Just, just peak 3D platforming right there for sure. Before they just went off the rails and like Banjo Tooie and Donkey Kong 64, they it's just so big. But you no, know, I love them too. And I'm definitely thinking we're gonna play uh, Donkey Kong Country, so, uh, Donkey Kong Country 64 someday as well. <clears throat> no time for a drink, I guess, during the credits. <laughs> it's mumbo jumbo. But I think Banjo Kazooie is just such like a nice size. That, again, even though I had to replay part of it, it was still so fun and enjoyable. And I love that uh, Grunty's Fern is fun at the end there. But yeah, they really go through like every single character. <laughs> so, so sit back. I like how on the, uh, it, since it's HD, you can see there's like a bit of a garbage pixel left over whenever there's an apostrophe. I feel like you would never see that on the uh, N64. And they like likely didn't even notice it when they were working on the game. But you can see there's just like a little extra pixel under the apostrophe that didn't get cleaned up. Kazooie's so mean, says Shelby. Uh, Tootie is a milk carton in the sequel, just to show... <laughs> um, yeah, for sure, Super Tom. Like, yeah, I love, um, you know, Banjo-Tooie. Definitely got more creative with the story in that one. Again, Bottles gets what he deserves, so we can all celebrate. Not through the whole thing, but I'm sure it was great, said Trucy. It was the best part of the game! Oh, man, we don't like this guy. Big noisemaker, Grant Clanker Kirkhope. There you go. Who's that guy? He's never made anything good. Every game that he makes music for is like 0 out of 10. Same with that David Wise guy. Uh, no, I haven't played uh, Forbidden Island, David Ray. Uh, they're just like shoving every name into this guy now. Jamie Jinxie Williams. 
Andrew Whiplash Wilson, that's me. Well, remember, remember Trunker? Most important character of the game. <laughs> Simon Logo Farmer. He's named after the toilet. Strange noisemakers. Anyway, big thanks, Ken. And hey, look, it shows the Jiggy there, even though we collected it. Big cheese thanks to Mr. Yamauchi, Mr. Mumujumbu, Arakawa, oh, Howard Lincoln, there you go. Fukuda. Has anyone, like, found a way to glitch so that, uh, you know, to get more Jiggies and stuff than are actually in the game? I'd be surprised if they haven't. I need to go look more into Banjo-Kazooie glitches, and not just the detrimental ones like we ran into in this playthrough, but I'm sure there's probably some really funny ones you can pull off. Pumpkin in the toilet, right? That reminds me of that time I, uh, oh, what was I, like, two? And uh, does anyone remember Dunkaroos? And they came in, like, that blue plastic container? Well, I was, like, again, like, two. I figured, you know, things go down the toilet that, you know, disappear, and so it's just, like, the trash. So I flushed one of those Dunkaroo containers down the toilet, and it got clogged, and my dad had to, like, disassemble the whole toilet to, to remove the Dunkaroo container from it. But it seemed like just like any other garbage disposal. And, uh, I've been clogging toilets ever since. It's bottles! <laughs> Rare additional keyboard tapping. Dunkaroos became dumperers. <laughs> I like that, I like that. Dunkaroos are still a thing? That's good. I saw uh, fruit roll-ups at the store the other day. I was like, whoa, they still make those? Hey, we already saw Lago. They're reusing names now. It's not your fault Rare named it that. Are you got in trouble saying what they name Ice Cube on this game? Yeah, Rareware had uh, some interesting things going on. Wait a minute. We've already seen, like, all these characters. You still get Fruit Rollers and Gushers, your favorite candy ever. Man, I remember when Gushers first came out. And I was just I was at like March uh, March break camp, and it started with this campaign of like, what flavor is the mystery gusher? And it was like the big hot topic of the March break camp of what could that flavor be? Simpler times. <laughs> oh, but yeah, fruit gushers are great. Uh, yeah. See, I, I noticed that hack and quack, and it definitely seems to be going on longer than I remember it. But you know, that's what we're here for. We're here for those differences. So enjoy, everyone. Yeah, games cannot be released today without like a 36 minute credit sequence. Find my name in the Mighty Number no. 9 credits right now! I forget how long it takes for it to show up, like 3 hours or something? What was that, like number 60,000? <laughs> Anyone remember when Foot by the Foot had Mario characters on them? 98, nine, uh, do you remember when there was Mario shaped, like, Kraft Dinner? No, probably, yeah, do you guys call it Kraft Dinner? Mac, mac and Cheese? Yeah, there used to be a lot of Mario-themed stuff. It was awesome. But yeah, I, you're so right to hack and quack in. <laughs> like, yeah, they're, they're just looping through everyone again. That's how lazy they are. They should have invented all new characters to like use up each of these new names. I mean, a lot of people had to work on the fact that there was a new Mumbo message after I collected all of the Jinjos, okay? Cut them some slack. That must have taken at least like 400 man hours. Remember Donkey Kong Country Gummies? <laughs> There's a fight after the credits! That's the credits! There can't be anything after the credits. You lie. It's over. GG says Christian. Thank you. Thank you. Ukulele also has an endless credits section with all the backers. You found your name in there when you played it, but I took a... It was long just had to get to the M's. Right? Uh, I mean, I wish I had backed uh, Ukulele. Because ukulele was after Mighty Number no. Nine, and I backed Mighty Number no. Nine, and that was kind of like okay, you know, ugh, 
This, this is already kind of is what it is. And then I didn't back uh, ukulele after that. Because it seemed like it kind of became like a fad at that point. Everyone started the Kickstarter where... But you know, ukulele, I, I enjoy ukulele enough that I look back and wish I had done that one. <laughs> where, Mighty Number, you know, where Mighty Number 9 didn't uh, come out quite according to plan. I still enjoyed it for what it was. And I've, I've you know, said before, I I did like the $60 one. So I got the, the NES sized box with it. But all right, everyone. Party time! There better be root beer in that mug. Oh, Raynock, yeah, that, that would have been a cool one too. Yeah, there's definitely games that are worth backing for sure. Funny how Money Number 9 was like the first big Kickstarter, and that's probably one that most people think wasn't really worth it. Or so many other games that uh, were on Kickstarter came out much better. But yeah, drink up, guys! You did a good job there. Um, I always found this really interesting. It's like, you did what you set out to do. You you rescued Tootie, right? But no. We, we can't be satisfied until we've absolutely kicked the butt of the main villain. <laughs> so, so get back up there. Even though she like literally you know gave us what we, what we came here for. That's not enough. Violence must ensue. And so it will. And yeah, there you go. That's Grunty's Furnace Fun. Such an enjoyable part of the game. It would have been cool if in the 360 version they added in like a way to replay it. But I don't see such a thing. But oh yeah, here we go. Spooky time. So one thing I really like about Banjo-Kazooie, and people will probably disagree, is that it requires a lot of the collectibles in order to beat. Like 810 notes, there's 9 levels with 100 each. That means you have to have played every single level at least a little bit. And again, that's like 90% of the notes. Like, how many games can you think of that require 90% of the collectibles to reach the end? Like, not bonus content, just the end. Like, even Mario 64 is like, what, 70 out of 120 stars? So it's literally only like 50% of what you need to do, pretty much. And remember, we have every Jiggy. There are only six extra Jiggies in the game in order to like, you know, to get to the final boss. Like that's insane for a game. Imagine a game today requiring you to find that many collectibles just to beat it. I love it, <laughs> but I'm sure there are some people who would disagree. And we have to experience this room and oh man, the hours I spent in here wondering how do I open this door? Is this connected to stop and swap in some way? Maybe if I ground pound this machine like 40 times, something will open up, but nothing happens in here. It's just something that you get to experience from the cutscene, but otherwise there's absolutely nothing in here that you can do. But just tell me that machine doesn't look like something would happen if you hit it enough times. But all right, we've spent our notes, we've used our jiggies. Final room. Did you say 64 only required half the golden bananas? Like, isn't that, it's so true, Super Tom. Like, <laughs> it's, like that, that game's crazy how much there is to collect, but yeah, there, it doesn't really require you to get, um, you know, too much of it, when you think about it. The thing that's really important in Donkey Kong 64 is the blueprints, because of how they affect that final level. I ran out of time in it once when I was a kid, and that wasn't fun. But here you go, everyone! We're in the final room now! Jump into this guy and he'll shoot us up to the final battle. But as you can see, there's still no doors in the background, so what's up with that? But you need the blueprints in 64. Yes, Daniel, yes. Reman 1 requires all the fairies. Yeah, it seems like there was that sweet spot around the late 90s when they didn't feel so afraid to, to really push you to collect everything. But, uh, but by the 2000s, that would change for sure. All right, what's the least one? 828 seems like probably the next in order. And behind this door is a giant blue egg. And when we collect that, boosts us back up to the max, which we hilariously were already at. What other doors do we get in here? 
882, the highest door in the game, and 846. Again, really like awkward camera angle where you can barely even see what you're doing here. And this one has a giant red feather behind it, which you can probably guess reduces us down to zero and they'll boost us back up to max. Did I tell you she puked in me? It was awful. TMI, man, TMI. 864. Naturally, also a gold feather. But what's behind the last door, everyone? Any guesses? And we really needed that gold feather, too. Um, and you know, so you can leave, come back. Those will respawn. It would have been cool if it was just like, you know, it unlocked uh, infinite of them or something like that. Could have been kind of cool. But this door, this is the most mysterious door in the game. And the first time I came here as a kid, naturally, I didn't have that many. So I was so excited to find out what was behind it. A dragon, the frozen key. Real gamers collect everything, says <laughs> Rihanna. Um, here we go. But yes, yeah, I hear you, Super Tom. Behind this door is one final puzzle with four pieces. Filling this in doubles our HP by making it red. Now taking a hit will turn each piece yellow, and after that, they actually start decreasing. So you now have 16 units of health in this game. Which is incredible. And again, all considering the fact that, um, you know, collecting those last six empty honeycombs didn't even do anything. It's funny that, uh, you see a toilet in here? <laughs> so I guess we're... What? You mean she doesn't go to Mad Monster Mansion every time? Like, how does it work? Like, does she live here? Like, does she go home to Mad Monster Mansion every night? I kind of like all the sayings he was saying. I don't think he does that after you beat her. Because you cannot redo the final boss fight after you've won. But speaking of which, here we go. The last two jiggies are yours to enjoy. Collect them, take them home, put them in a display case. Uh, as a kid, it always really bothered me. I thought maybe I was missing something somewhere where they could go, but no. So there literally are only two spare jiggies in the entire game. Again, there's six extra just to get to the final boss, but it's two extra if you want to actually do everything. So I remember this, this is a really long boss fight. I think it's like four stages that require four hits each, so buckle in, everybody. First stage simple enough. We just do some dodging. So this is the third, right? Yep, so still one more hit, I think. Yeah. This is probably one of the best songs ever though. Like this this final boss battle theme. If you have a final boss in your game and it has like the lamest low down unexciting theme, like just it ruins the whole final boss battle. This is such a good song. Now this is an impossible to dodge homing attack. That can only be blocked by you guessed it, Wonder Wing. And you do have a few items around the outside that you can use to replenish. I think that they re uh, respawn, they regenerate after you collect them. Because items are required for this fight. I pressed the wrong button to shoot eggs forward. It's not something we've done that often in this playthrough. Okay, she does stop firing after if it actually gives us uh, an opening to shoot. But yeah, items are absolutely required in this fight. So if you haven't learned some of the moves, but again, be just because of how many jiggies and stuff are required, it's probably impossible to even get here without uh, you know, the ability to fly or the, the Wonder Wing. Like, the Wonder Wing's the one that, you know, if you don't have it, I guess you'll just be you know, forced to take some hits, but it doesn't make the fight unwinnable as long as you have enough health. This is scary, though. Standing on top of these uh, you know, ramparts here is really uncomfortable. Because falling is insta-death. And you know what knockback looks like in this game. Can I zoom out a little bit from Banjo? Yes. I apologize to if anyone's in the chat <laughs> yelling to zoom out. It's not like the C buttons in the 64. It's easy to accidentally hit the, the stick in a direction you don't mean to. But yeah, like I said, four hits per stage. So she's going all the way around the top of the castle here. 
How many was that? Only like three? I, I don't know why. For some reason, I'm thinking that shooting eggs is like up on the second stick, which would you know, be like up C on the 64 controller. That's my bad. There you go. Yeah, eggs is one of the lesser used things in Banjo-Kazooie. Like, there's lots of places where you can use them if you want to. Like, that should be good. Oh, one miss. <laughs> and you have to jump up there. I don't think you can hit her if you shoot from, like, the lower section here. And that should be it for that part. Because, see, the weird part is that to activate Wonder Wing is still right on the camera stick. But all right, it's flying time, everyone. I don't think we actually took any hits. So, again, you got to use all those skills you learned throughout the game. And this is another four that we're going to have to do here. And she starts firing at you, too. So, like, if you take a bad hit and you fall... Enjoy doing the whole fight over again. I don't miss either. She does pause, like, so you can kind of wait for that. You kind of want to get some distance from her. <laughs> went right through me. There is a barrier, so like you can't just keep flying forever. Eventually you'll hit a wall. But it does just kind of show like the you know the size of this battle every now when you can fly around it. Of course that wasn't gonna work. There. One more, I think. The worst is if, like, I miss her and I hit, like, the top of the castle. Oh, she stopped. Don't go too low, man. Don't go too low. Now, I think we want to get down to avoid her homing attack. What? That was worth fall damage? Well, at least there's health. And the health doesn't despawn, which is interesting. So she has a shield now. What should we do about that? Oh no, another hit. It's the Jinjos! I mean, we did save all of them, so it's about time they paid back. First DKC, K rule was hard. Yeah, that was probably, probably the toughest of all the DKC bosses. So we got these statues now, everyone. And yeah, it's weird. Like You gotta be in just like the right spot to get in the hole. There's purple, or pink. Is there like an official stance on that? And there's green. Thank goodness for the red health. <laughs> she's, she's really getting me. There's orange. I mean, she's like so close to you in this section. Yellow! Her broom has been broken. Alright, well she's a little bit closer now. Oh my god, what if it soft locks me or something because I'm like fused inside? That would have been so funny. Alright, there you go. It's the Ginginator, everybody! The last phase of the fight. And we're gonna have these kind of mixed in all over the place, too. You have to put a whole ton of eggs 
through these holes in the side until it closes up like that. This one I feel like I've put like a million eggs into it. It's not closing. There we go. I don't know if that does more than one hit or not, but let's not find out. That's it. One more hole. And wow, look, if we didn't have the double health, yeah, we'd be kind of scared right now. But that's what we get for 100% and everybody. Game cleared. The final boss of Banjo-Kazooie, and it is a good one. <laughs> okay, proof for the night that Banjo was still there. The Banjo-Kazooie National Anthem. But no, I, I, Rareware games really knew how to do awesome final bosses. Donkey Kong 64 as well. Regardless of what you think about that game, if you hate like all the collecting and stuff, the boss of the game is so cool. And how they incorporate all the Kongs into it. And this is awesome too. I love how it unlocks the achievement right there. What a good game. Banjo Kazooie is just such a good game. And it holds up so well. Hey, Rule is always cool, right? They gotta bring him back someday. For a, for a returns game. And there you go, everyone! We did it! 100% Banjo-Kazooie! So you know what we do? Another party, but this time on the beach. Is this the same beach from Super Mario Bros. CD? <laughs> Get the... Oh, no, Rareware. You're hilarious. Ah, uh, yeah, she was sealed by one polygon clipping into the ground for all eternity, says Tracy. Miles Luigi, you're planning on playing the sequel, so we'll get to see what happens to Grunty. Absolutely, Miles Luigi, yes. Oh, I'm so happy to be playing these, uh, the, all the Banjo-Kazooie games. And I'm even excited for Nuts and Bolts, but we got a whole other thing in the middle before we get to that. Did you hear that? I'm a hero. So he's kind of like the, the the cranky fill in here, where Cranky taunts you at the end of all the ban uh, Donkey Kong Country games about I bet you didn't find all my hero coins. We already watched that. And they stick in like what, like the two extra characters we saw at the end, and Klungo. We'll never see that guy again. Definitely not in the sequel. It even includes, like, just the, the enemies this time. There you go. Can you skip the credits? I'm not gonna press the button to potentially find out. We're gonna- we, we worked for this, we're gonna enjoy it. Even if we've already seen, like, the good guy credits. Now we're seeing the bad guy. Like, those aren't, like, I had to give those guys a name as well. Christian, thank you. <laughs> um... So we're doing the secret eggs in the ice key. So my understanding is that once you have a Banjo-Tooie save file, Banjo-Kazooie 1 will recognize that and open up those areas. But I'm not starting Banjo-Tooie uh, until next time. So what we're probably going to do is we'll do another stream of Banjo-Tooie next week. And then at the beginning of the stream following that, once we have the save data, we'll start it by doing the stop and swap stuff. Because there's no rush to get it. Um, but yeah, I, I think I want to put that at the beginning of a stream, and I'm not going to make that, like, next week's stream. So two weeks from now, assuming what I understand is correct, we'll be getting all the stop and swap stuff. But don't worry, we will see it. It will be part of these playthroughs, and I'm just as excited as you are to see how Microsoft handled it. Raynock199 Super Chat, thank you so much! Swarm of bee-sized bears, or a few bear-sized bees. Oh god, bear-sized bees, that's a scary thought. I like how that, that fish guy was included as part of the enemies. I mean, he was he was literally one of the most helpful NPCs in the game. <laughs> and he gets included with the bad guys. Stop and swap next time. So stop and swap two weeks from now. 
I think. You don't need Banjo to be safe while you have all the eggs and key on your 64, says C. Robinson. Hope you're having a great, uh, great night, everyone. Um, so the way it works is there is codes. There are codes that you can enter into the sandcastle floor. That, that was one of the first things I discovered when I got the internet. Rushed home, entered those, finally got those, uh, those stop and swap eggs and the ice key. So yeah, you can enter those in the floor to open those secret areas. However, there has actually been stop and swap functionality added into the Xbox versions of these games, like officially, no codes required, that when we play Banjo-Tooie and get that save file, it will automatically open up those areas for us. So that's the way we're going to experience it here. Years ago, I made a video where I showed off the codes and got them on the 64 version. But yeah, I think here we're going to do it the way that Microsoft intended it. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to that and hope all of you are as well. Um, so what game is next? True Seed Banjo-Tooie on the Thursday nights. Of course, uh, stay tuned for more ROM hacks on the Monday nights. Mario World ROM hacks. We've been having a lot of fun with those. And also, don't be surprised if either tomorrow or sometime this weekend you see an NES game stream. So yeah, lots, lots going on. The link to the Discord channel, or rather server, is down in the description, which is always a great way to keep up with the, uh, the stream schedule. Any changes that might happen there. Plus, we just have a lot of fun chatting about games, so feel free to check it out. So happy everyone's been having so much fun tonight. It's Tumblr. Like, like they, they literally gave that thing a name. Imagine carrying... Only to call him Soggy, says Big Phil. <laughs> Oh boy. Nibbly. There's the moon in the background. Everything looks so nice on the Xbox. Again, I really like the Xbox 360 version. I think this has been really fun. The widescreen's been nice. The draw, the, uh, extended draw distance, very, very cool. You know, it's, uh, everything in HD looks really good. The only problem we had was that glitch. And of course, you know, the addition of things like achievements and a few little bonuses here and there. The extended credits, though, was by far the best part. If you're going to play any version, definitely play the Xbox version for the longer credits. I say as I'm losing my voice again. Snare Bear. But yeah, good times all around. Really enjoyed this. Happy that all of you did too. You got here right where it ended, said Brady. Don't worry, we got more banjo action for everyone next week. Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm really excited for Banjo-Tooie. Again, so Banjo-Kazooie, I can see this game in my sleep, which is why I was really terrified when I couldn't find those last few notes in Mad Monster Mansion. I was so afraid of, like, like how have I forgotten this? I don't forget parts of Banjo-Kazooie. Um, but yeah, Tooie will be interesting, because it's much bigger, and I've played it less. I have, of course, 100% of it, though, but not in many years. We got secret pictures, everybody! Pictures of things we missed! Secrets used in next game. I'm so excited for the stop and swap stuff. <laughs> I like how, when you think about it, you know, they released this. You know, they, they were advertising a second game already when it hadn't even sold yet. But they just knew. Like, this game was so obviously going to go down as one of the best games of all time. Like, there was no question about it. Yeah, David Ray, I have no idea what's up with that. <laughs> Oh, Rareware. Hello, Wheels! Yeah, hope you're having a great night. Yeah, uh, it will either, it will probably be sometimes this weekend. Either tomorrow night, maybe, or if not, maybe Saturday or Sunday. But keep an eye on the Discord channel, where I always kind of, you know, drop what I'm thinking in regards to streams. But otherwise, yeah, thanks for your interest. I'm looking forward to playing more NES games. We've got a lot of really good NES games coming up. Silver Surfer, the Bart Simpson games, Snake Rattle and Roll, Snake's Revenge. Lots of S games that are going to be really fun to stream, so uh, I'm looking forward to that too. All right, everyone, let's take a look at what we missed. Don't do it, Banjo. Don't accidentally collect the note that I'll then never be able to collect. It's actually really smart, though, that in these cutscenes, you know, he doesn't touch the egg. <laughs> because if he did then um, yeah, we'd be kind of toast. I like how you can see how jagged the video is inside the, the picture. 
I don't like it doesn't it either doesn't look like that on the 64 or just something about it being on the Xbox makes the the video inside the picture look really weird they said banjo nuts and bolts yeah because uh, some of the eggs I think even have utility in banjo kazooie nuts and bolts oh my gosh he well, he didn't do the jump right the, the, the videos don't work correctly. Wait, because I haven't touched the thing in a while? Okay, there. <laughs> um, in... That's funny. Is he is he going to make this jump correctly? No, he's not! Okay, he did, he did. For a second, it looked like he was just kind of walking into the wall there. This is so weird. Oh, there's the ice key for Donkey Kong 64. Yeah, tearing, that's the word. That's the word, true seed. Don't do it! Don't get those notes! No! My whole playthrough has been ruined! What are they for? <laughs> it's only another stupid A. No, it's not a stupid egg. It's eggs that freaking ruined my childhood. And the years I spent trying to bust through walls and do silly things to get in there. Find out in Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. So is it Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts save data I have to have? Or Banjo Tooie? I'll, I'll confirm that. Regardless, we're definitely going to be playing Nuts and Bolts anyway, and I have that ready, so. So heavy. I like how she references that we got all the jiggies. Cool. But there's nothing worse than when a freaking game ends with game over. That's what you see when you lose all your lives. The end is what you're supposed to show at the end. And that's it, back to the title screen. So let's see, the, the true question you're all here waiting for is where did we rank on the leaderboards? <laughs> you still lost as Raynock, right? Um, but achievements, we should have all of those. Yeah, 200. Gamer score out of 200. And the leaderboards. Um, so how do we do this? My score, I'm ranked 4,046th, 5 hours and 26 minutes. There you go, right up, right below Kirk6435 and above Monday AI. Cool. Look at that, I'm actually literally tied with Kirk6435. Banjo Brothers, let's go. Interesting. Okay, so now I can scroll through it. Weird, I couldn't before. Big boy braid. <laughs> we just go through this all day. You can even like press A to view their profile, which is kind of kind of crazy. We could send them a friend request. Send send my banjo brother a friend request. Wouldn't that be hilarious? If if uh, if they actually like accepted it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Banjo Bros, let's go. <laughs> He even has the the Kazooie uh, the Kazooie profile picture. All right. Well, now that we've uh, you know harassed people online, I think this was a pretty good stream. Oh, did it say offline since 2017? <laughs> it's probably not gonna happen then. Maybe he'll get like an email or something. Um, even when winning, you still lose, says Brady. Um. So yeah, I think that's where we're going to wrap things up tonight. Overall, it was a really fun stream. Really happy to get Banjo-Kazooie done. There you go. Um, <laughs> great stream. Thank you so much, Hack and Quack. And yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Oh, don't press right trigger by accident and delete that, uh, that save file. So yeah, Banjo-Kazooie 1 was really, really fun to play through. So tune in next week for Banjo-Tooie. Otherwise, any final thoughts? Hope you all have an excellent night. And yeah, again, uh, check out the Discord server for what's coming up later. Monday for sure, we'll be doing that Mario World ROM hack stream. 
and next Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern for Banjo Tooie. And you only had to play it twice. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the, this is gonna be one of the longest uh, Banjo Kazooie playthroughs out there because literally it includes half the game again. Ugh. But I had fun, so that's what counts. But see you later, everyone. Have a great Thursday night.